baby boomers and after 1965, immigrants into the workforce. But when we've tripled the size of the labor force, we've just about tripled the number of jobs. There's no long-term increase in unemployment. So, um, you know, more people coming into the the job market isn't doesn't take people's jobs. I've always sort of said this, um, and I like to use the example of the candlestick makers. Um, this has been, you know, often used in liberty circles. Is that you know, innovation comes along, it frees up labor. It's no fun to be kicked out of your job. There's no doubt about it. But in all likelihood, you're going to find something, and maybe that thing's even better. Oh, I wonder if we've lost him again. We might be having some uh, internet difficulties here tonight. Ben, are you there with us? The wonders uh, of modern conveniences. I'm here. Okay. okay. <laughs> I am. Do you hear me? Yep, I got we hear you. you now. Yeah, so uh, what so I was... I th- I, Go ahead. I think the, the exa- I heard most of it, and the example you're giving is exactly right. Because free trade and labor, i.e. immigration, is not fundamentally different than free trade and goods and services, which libertarian-oriented people almost universally favor. The argument for it is neither about job creation nor job loss. It's about changing the mix of jobs to those things that we are best suited to do given our skill sets. When low-skill immigrants come to the United States, they perform low-skill tasks and free up American labor that's relatively higher-skilled to do other things that are more valuable. It's not about job creation or loss. It's about changing what jobs we do so that they're the ones we're the most productive in. Also, I'd say a a lot of people are concerned with um, immigrants coming here and and taking welfare. Now, I wouldn't recommend, as a matter of fact, I have uh, come up with something I call the blue card as opposed to a green card. The blue card, which is a citizenship program um, or uh, an immigration program that allows people to come here and, uh, you know, come to the country but they wouldn't be eligible for any kind of social welfare benefit. And yeah, people don't seem to mind that quite as much because they're very concerned with the idea of, uh, you know, a bunch of freeloaders coming to the country and uh, sucking off the teat of uh, the welfare state. And I can understand that. But to me, what that problem is, is that's an immig- that's a, uh, a welfare problem, not an immigration problem. So I, I agree it's a welfare problem, not fundamentally an immigration problem. Whether we're birthing them here or importing them into the country, I'm not a fan of more people sucking off the tit of the welfare state. But, I, and I have sympathy with your, your blue card idea. It's problematic, of course, of which well, you can cut off welfare benefits of cash payments and stuff. But uh, at least given current U.S. policy where kids birthed here become citizens and then have the right to go to school here, it's a bit problematic of how you implement this exactly. But what I'd say is the, the good news overall is the responsible studies that look at the tax impact of immigrants, if they have to look at the ripple effects through the economy, because when the employer who employs them earns a higher profit, he pays more taxes. And when you look at it over the course of their lifetime, and if you count their children's as a tax drain when they're a child, you have to count the tax revenue from that child when they're an adult. The studies on this, some so it tax drain, some so it tax gain, but the estimates are all small and clustered around zero. They're not very big. And ultimately, of course, immigration makes the overall pie bigger. America becomes wealthier. So changing tax policy is a choice for the United States. If someone wanted to implement, you, you suggest the blue card, which I think is fine. But if you also wanted to just say immigrants have to pay an extra 10 percent of their income in taxes for the right to come here or pay an upfront fee. I think many immigrants around the world or would be immigrants around the world would be thrilled to take that deal. They're and already paying wash upfront out. fees, though. I mean, right. getting... they pay an upfront fee, but they pay it to a lawyer as opposed to the immigration. Well, they're paying application fees just to apply to uh, to immigrate here. I mean, uh, it seems like the fees are actually really prohibitive as far as I think what they pay to coyotes. If you could, if the United States government was collecting the uh, tens of thousands of dollars uh, that you know, at least ten thousand dollars they're paying to the coyote, and then the money that they pay the immigration attorneys and all that other stuff, if the United States government was uh, collecting that instead. Eh, you know, it'd be some revenue. Well, I certainly don't get excited about giving revenue to uh, the United States government. Nor do I. Um, last thing, uh, uh, Ben Powell, is is that um, I, I think a lot of people but, are. Guys, Go ahead. I obviously don't get excited about. I, don't... I obviously don't give a, get excited about giving extra revenue to the government either. In fact, one of the the drawbacks to immigrate, immigration is probably that it perpetuates this Ponzi scheme that is Social Security a little bit longer. Uh, however, if the concern is the welfare state, fiscal policy is a matter of choice. If immigrants make the pie bigger, there's no need for welfare benefits to be the constraint that makes someone not favor more open borders. 
Last thing I think that uh, people are concerned with is uh, how are immigrants going to vote? How are they going to throw off the voting scheme? Uh, for instance, I mean, you know, some people have conjectured that uh, if if people coming across the border were likely to vote Republican, that Hillary might be out there, um, you know, with a sniper rifle picking them off as they were coming across. But the likelihood is, is that most immigrants coming across the border are going to vote Democrat, thereby throwing off, uh, you know, whatever, if you call this a balance, whatever balance that exists. Is that true? So I think that this is probably the least well understood question of immigration that for classical liberal type people warrants the most future study. But I will say a couple things about it. One, it's not at all clear to me whether the Republicans or the Democrats are more pro-market, pro-free market, pro-liberty. It's uh, <laughs> quite the mix. So I don't want to use that as my metric. But uh, George Borjas is probably the most prominent economist who's a critic of greater immigration, also an immigrant himself, by the way. And he has made basically this argument that they'll come here and destroy our institutions and it will impoverish us that way. Uh, and ben, I want to make sure you have a chance to give this question a full response. So stand by. We're going to continue the discussion here. We've got uh, Dr. Benjamin Powell with us, and he just wrote a book called Economics or The Economics of Immigration. If you've got a question for him, he's got time for just a few. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, you can't Skype in to talk to him because he's already on Skype, so you do have to call in. It's Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon. But now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. The live Sunday edition continues as you may join us toll-free. Uh, if you've got a question for Dr. Benjamin Powell, he's with us here, and he is the author of The Economics of Immigration, uh, and talking about immigration, of course, is one of the hottest issues on uh, you know, people's lips right now, and it has been for a number of years. It certainly is always a hot topic here on Free Talk Live. It's always good to talk to somebody who's done some research and knows a few facts on the issue. Uh, one of the, the uh, main pickups here that I've gotten from the conversation so far is that as far as the fear that immigrants are going to take jobs is concerned— the numbers actually don't show that that's, uh, that's the case at all. In fact, uh, as, as uh, Ben pointed out, the, uh, you know, the people that are coming here are actually creating jobs. They're, you know, the, they're, they're being here and needing services just like the rest of us, needing to eat, needing to sleep somewhere, needing to be entertained. All of those things kind of factor into uh, making more jobs, which is something that we've been saying for a long time here on Free Talk Live. So it's good to hear that the, the numbers bear it out. Uh, ben Powell, you're, you're back on the air here uh, from Lubbock, Texas. All right, guys. So you were explaining a question, or I guess you were answering a question to us a moment ago about the concern that immigrants are going to vote one way or another. It's specifically, the idea is that they're not going to vote for freedom, that uh, these immigrants who presumably are coming here for more freedom are somehow not going to vote for more freedom uh, when they arrive. The idea being that they're all a bunch of socialists. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that before. Do we lose you again? We've been having some internet uh, difficulties here tonight, and... Uh, Skype has apparently just been cutting out uh, Ben randomly from our conversation. So hopefully so, he'll be able to rejoin it. He can just uh, pipe up whenever he's I back. I got that. Okay. He's Am back. I with you guys? Yes. Go ahead, sir. You guys got me? Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is a, a reasonable fear that people should investigate more. But what I'd say is the evidence so far doesn't really bear it out. Myself and co-authors actually just investigated this. Uh, looking at about 120 countries around the world and stocks and flows of immigration over the last 20 years. And we found that uh, a greater flow or stock of immigrants was actually a associated with a slight increase in economic freedom over that time period. Now, that doesn't speak necessarily to a world of complete open borders, but at least it says when we look at all the countries and immigrants mostly coming from poorer countries to richer countries, on net they've increased freedom a little bit in the numbers that they've come so far, which should make us pretty skeptical that they're coming here to destroy our institutions. After all, they're they're freeing, uh, fleeing pretty unfree places. It would seem odd to me that they would come here to destroy our freedoms. Yeah, no doubt about it. Although uh, certainly we do see people coming from Massachusetts to uh, New Hampshire, many of them to escape the tyranny of Massachusetts, but they still do tend to bring some of their Massachusetts ways. Uh, I, that's what north. people say, but I don't see any evidence of that either. No, okay. I mean, really, that's it, it's what people say. But wouldn't it stand to reason that if people are fleeing Massachusetts, that it would be the people that want less government? It would stand would to be... reason, but you could also argue that maybe they're well, just not well, principled. Tell you what, guys. Yes, sir. I, 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 I fled, Mass fled Massachusetts. I was born and raised there, and I'm living in Texas now. And I guarantee you, I'm the type of migrant who fl fled Massachusetts and went to the relatively free state of Texas and uh, doing all I can to make this place more free. There you go. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think that it, I don't think you can make a judgment based on the fact that somebody was born in a given geographic plot yeah. of land as to, you know, what kind of person they are. Um, no, I don't think you can either. So and historically, I mean, look at 19th century immigrants to the United States. 
Traditionally, they associated with the Democratic Party, at least at the national level in the 19th century. That was the free market party at the time. So there you go. I mean, you know, uh, 19th century immigrants were more free market than the locals. And you would make some sense that locals would want to be protectionist, which is not hearing you guys. Yeah. Um, which isn't free market at all. Uh, the people that uh, would, would be here already, they want to protect what they have going on. They want to restrict the labor market. So it might be that people, native born folks are more likely to be anti-freedom than immigrants. So, uh, Ben, well, actually, an, oh, go ahead. An Sorry. An, an interesting thing that you find is a bit of native born blowback. So when you look around the world at larger welfare states, it tends to be in more homogeneous populations. White, blonde haired, blue eyed Swedes don't mind subsidizing other white, blonde haired, blue eyed Swedes. But uh, all of a sudden, when it, people look different than you, people are less in favor of subsidizing others, which tends to shrink the welfare state. So in a perverse sense, immigration actually can create a blowback by native-born people who make them less favorable to a welfare state. Yay, bigotry. <laughs> so um, last thing I, I often hear is the idea of uh, diseases that are that are prolific south of the border creeping their way up north of the border, the scariest of which is uh, drug-resistant tuberculosis. We had or, one lady call say there were leprosy. Leprosy, uh, leprosy yeah, carriers. there's another one, right? Leprosy is going to get us. Don't so, we need the government to keep us safe from that? Always at the wrong time with these uh, dropouts here on the on the yeah. internet. Now, we, but, by the way, I'm not losing complete internet here, so it, it may be something between us and Ben. I'm not sure where this is coming from, and yeah. I apologize to our listeners who are anxiously awaiting an answer, as, as I was. He's uh, downloading the, the newest Disney princess movie. Uh, yeah, it's always a good idea if you're going to call us on Skype to not use any kind of upload servicing at that moment. So if you've got a torrent uh, going on on your computer, go ahead and hit the pause button on that uh, before giving us a call. I don't know if that's the problem here, but just a, a quick tip for anyone considering calling in on Skype. Ben, are you still uh, are you back with us at all? I'm back with you now, and I, I caught the first part of that to get the, the, the gist of it. Yeah, leprosy. Uh, people, uh, don't we need the government to keep us safe? Listen, we're so far from a world of open borders. If we're just looking at marginal improvements, if you want to have, I think, as long as we're in a world of nation states, checkpoints that people have to legally come through and be checked for disease and that they're not a known terrorist, that still opens up the floodgates to the vast majority of immigrants who would like to come here while dealing with those particular concerns. Yeah, I think that's a relatively easy one. What a social scientist. Your, your book is about um, social scientists and what they say about immigration. What are their concerns? We've outlined what sort of normal folks are concerned with as far as immigration. What do social scientists say? So I think among the, the differences of social scientists, debate is very small. They don't steal jobs. They don't depress wages. They vastly increase world wealth. They modestly increase the wealth of the United States. So the effect, they have a negative effect on U.S. citizens economically. It's high school dropouts in there. The effect is between zero and eight percent on their wages, and they debate how long that effects last before it goes away. The economics is basically out. When people who are serious social scientists who look at this impact, they're more concerned with other things. It could be crime. It could be terrorism. It could be assimilation. Uh, that's really, and, and you already alluded to the our, our institutions and voting, that's really where the, the debate is. But it's just a vastly different debate than what you usually hear on radio shows that aren't Free Talk Live. <laughs> Benjamin Powell, uh, thanks for coming on Free Talk Live here tonight. The book is The Economics of Immigration, Market-Based Approaches, Social Science, and Public Policy. Just search for uh, Dr. Benjamin Powell on Amazon. And, of course, you can shop it's Amazon. It's not his only book by any stretch. That's true. But it's all the first of them are pro-freedom. It's the first one that comes up. I typed in Benjamin Powell's the first one there on the list. Uh, and if you enter Amazon through our website at shop.freetalklive.com, then Free Talk Live gets a portion of the purchase price. And I'm sure you do as well. Ben, thanks for coming on Free Talk Live. Thanks as always, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, sorry about the Skype issues there. Uh, all right, so let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. You're welcome to join us here, whether it's immigration or something else entirely different. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, some not-so-exciting news from the Bitcoin universe, plus Chewbacca arrested in Ukraine. He was campaigning for Darth Vader. This is apparently a real story. It's from RT. <laughs> we'll share that with you. And, of course, you can bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live. 
Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. I know this sounds unbelievable, but at my house, we saved as much as 45% off of a new item on Amazon. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. If you want to play online poker with Bitcoin, you need a site that's trustworthy and technically sound. The site managers of swcpoker.eu have proven their commitment to bringing you great gameplay from a site you can trust, swcpoker.eu. They have lots of new games too, including Chinese poker, and their Krill leaderboard is open right now. It's a beautiful site, easy to use with lots of players. Go on over to swcpoker.eu now and have some fun with your Bitcoin, swcpoker.eu. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Money. Power and respect are all yours at Credit Success Secrets Revealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit did your nerves spike. You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. You may join us here on the radio waves, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype, our Skype username, which you may now use. Maybe you'll have better luck than uh, Ben Powell did. Skype username is lrn.fm. And uh, with you in studio, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. You know, I just mentioned, Mark, a few moments ago, if folks want to get Ben Powell's book about immigration, The Economics of Immigration, They can do it through Amazon, which means that Free Talk Live gets a cut when they go through shop.freetalklive.com. 
There's another way to get it through Amazon, however, which would be to go to saveatpurse.com, which will actually not really result in us getting as much of a cut when you do that. We'll get a small, small, small piece when you do, because we don't get as much because you don't have to pay as much when you go through saveatpurse.com. If you've got Bitcoin, how about saving 20% on that book? How about saving 20% on anything you buy on Amazon? Because you can pretty much do that with saveatpurse.com. Saveatpurse.com. You can save more than 20% as well, or you can save less. It's your choice. You get to decide what the discount is. The, the higher the discount, the longer you'll have to wait for your order to be fulfilled. So, like, I set a 40% discount once on a Blu-ray disc recently, and I got that discount, but it took a few days to get that fulfilled. If I need something quickly, I can just put it 20%, and that's usually filled within a few hours. Or if I want to do it instantly, there's Purse Instant for an instant 5% off. So it's an awesome service. The catch is you've got to have Bitcoin. Go to saveatpurse.com. Save, Save at at purse. Purse. com. That's right. It's a website, not an email address. All right. So uh, let's see here. More comments on immigration, Mark? Absolutely. So I thought that um, Dr. Benjamin Powell there was uh, he was very clear that, um, you know, immigrants are on the whole good for the economy, that um, as far as, you know, what uh, accepting welfare and things like that, generally the numbers uh, are on one side or the other of zero. So it's difficult to say exactly what that would be. Um, but you know, what would happen. But he did say, hey, you know, there are ways to address that particular issue that likely immigrants that wanted to work would be able to easily surmount. Rather than this giant apparatus of border control. Huge bureaucracy. Yeah. Huge bureaucracy that costs a great deal of money. Maybe you could just put some kind of entrance fee, uh, you know, a larger entrance fee or something like that on, and then they could come here and work. Another, I don't like that idea because uh, it keeps poor people out. I understand. Um, I'm I'm not advocating right. for it either. I'm just saying that look, we're dealing. You're starting. You're not starting at zero. You're starting with a situation of uh, you know an incredible bureaucracy around immigration and a great deal of jingoism on the part of uh, native-born people. Mm -hmm. And you have to address those issues. Look at Donald Trump. He ha he was uh, in the lead for uh, more, a couple of months based largely upon his anti-immigrant rhetoric. That's Yeah, that usually plays disturbing. well during an election time. It's not anything new. It was like that in 2012 and 2008. And, you know, these candidates love to attack the immigrants because they're a convenient scapegoat. Uh, you know, a political candidate doesn't want to admit that government is the cause of problems because they're part of that. So they'd much rather put the blame on some group of people, whether it's the terrorists or the drug dealers or the immigrants, uh, immigrants are just a more recent boogeyman for the politicians to to pick on and you know put all these kind of issues and blame them for it. When it's really most of the problems that people perceive as, as caused by immigrants are actually caused by government policies. Yeah, uh, like the minimum wage, let's say, for instance. In many cases, that is um, th that is the case. Uh, so when you're talking about immigrants, people who want to come here and work for a better life. Um, another thing that has been recently brought up is the birthright citizenship or anchor babies or whatever terminology you wish. And I did some reading on this, and apparently um, there isn't anything constitutional behind the idea of being, uh, you know, born on this plot of land and getting uh, citizenship. So I suppose that's another chip on the table. Let's go to the phones. We got Ralph. He is in. Uh, he's calling from a spaceship in New Jersey. I'm not really sure. Ralph, you're on Free Talk Live. Are you on a spaceship uh, no, tonight? I, I thought I thought I thought that guy. <laughs> what, what what station are you listening uh, on? It's it, actually the, the the station is W O B M. W O B M. Yeah. I, in, I, call, uh, ocean. I call I call it I call it Radio Obama or Radio Spaceship. <laughs> Radio but Obama. Nevertheless, yes. You are look O B and M. Now what what letters are are missing <laughs> to form the word Obama? O B and M. I have a sneaking what, what suspicion that the radio station wasn't it's named it. after Barack Obama, but I'll, I'll do a little research well, and see what I can find out for you. Two A's is the right. answer to your question. Uh, well, okay. But anyhow, white guilt is once again, you know, uh, a factor that uh, is driving this issue of immigration. Because, it, 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 you know, you, you have to uh, listen, you know, to daily discourse in this country about that issue, and you're going to get... Uh, why, uh, why a segment of the white population talk about how racist this country is and how they want to, you know, 
maintain the white majority in this like, like this there is where that what what do you think would happen to Europe if you know they keep taking in this exodus right now coming from the Middle East. Already the term Eurabia is being thrown out. You know what Eurabian? That is that what you said? The Eurabians. Eurabia okay. or Eurabians. Arabia or Arabian. And what's the problem right. with that exactly? People coming from well, he says what's going to happen to Europe, and I'm going to tell you that uh, a a sufficient influx of immigration into Europe could be catastrophic for their governments. But it's not because of immigration; it's because of their welfare state. It's because um, in places like well, France, hold on just a second, security? in a place like France, what about the issue of national security? but that's a welfare program. The, the, it because of, uh, then the national security issue because a welfare program. I'm sorry, I thought you said social security. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you said national no, no, security. No, national security. Yeah. Here's a here's a little surprise. If you stop stop uh, bombing people's uh, families with remote control airplanes, they're going to be less likely to want to kill you. <laughs> I know he's doing that right now. I mean, the United Obama States, United government. States government and, under the form of Barack I mean, Obama, and before that, Obama, uh, George Bush. You know, Obama just continued right. the George it's Bush policy. It's not a race issue, Frank. It's, it's a it's, bomb it's, it's issue. Ralph. Ralph, it's Ralph in New Jersey. Me. Ralph, look, uh, it, 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 look, Barack Obama continued the policies of George W. Bush. So they're the same guy. You understand that, right? Uh, oh, really? So that's, that's the reason why, you know, right now in Syria... Uh, Russia is more like. Uh, By the way, Ralph, the I gotta give you a heads up. Uh, OBM W O B M stands for and, and Ocean that, that, Burlington Monmouth. Thanks for the call tonight. Uh, different areas in the New Jersey region where he's calling from. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Great station, by the way. I'm glad to be on there uh, live here on a Sunday night. Let's talk to Steve, who's listening to their sister station, WPG. Hello, Steve. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Um, my comment about the immigration thing is that uh, it seems that the people that are illegal aliens, as we call them or whatever you want to call them, uh, have a problem with assimilation besides the other things that they bring, like uh, diseases and some of them might be criminals and things like that. Uh, they don't want to assimilate. Now, can- that, saying they don't want to assimilate is awfully, it's painting with an awful broad brush, isn't it? Do you have any personal experience with that? Um, yeah, I've been around some different immigrants from other countries that go, it seems like every third comment they go, my country, this, when I'm in my country, when I'm in my country, well, you're here, this is going to be your country. Why are you, um, making the, uh, comparisons you know, that, that happens with Americans, too. Uh, Mark, you and I, we moved here from Florida back in 2006 as part of the Free State Project where we moved to New Hampshire. And uh, I, I think for a time when someone moves to a new place, it's pretty common for them to refer to as, you know, to, to refer to the place from which they've moved as their home, uh, even though their new home is now where they're sleeping, which is the new place to which they've moved. But I, I, I think we did that for a period of time. Now I consider this to be home, but for a while I probably would have accidentally referred to Florida as uh, as home. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm sure no, you've no, heard no, of a place no, called no. Little Italy, but it doesn't really exist anymore. There's, not done. there's really it's not, not any Little happen. Italy's. Hang on, Steve. We'll let you comment here. Uh, I want to give you a chance. 855 450 free. The idea of uh, immigrants not so called assimilating. The evidence just doesn't back that claim up. Uh, we'll continue here, and you can join us. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. It's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. Attention. A very wealthy U.S. benefactor now reveals money-making secrets used by the rich and powerful. Credit success secrets once used only at the top levels of business are now being revealed to the general public. Imagine having a business that runs itself, puts money in your pocket, so you never have to go to work. Imagine someone else gave you the money to start. Secret groups are pulling for your success by giving perfect scores in both business and personal credit. They show you how to get good credit and how to use good credit. If you have bad credit, no credit, or your credit isn't as good as that other guy's credit, it really doesn't matter anymore. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many get cash in pocket right now. Call now for free information on how Credit Success Secrets Revealed can put money in your pocket so you never work again. Call 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or 
go to creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. It's time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke too. LaSig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaSig.com, spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. LaSig e-cigarettes. Kick some ash. A lot of people's lives and bodies are out of balance. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops optimize pH level and get rid of harmful waste and acid. Just a few drops in water restores vibrance and energy and gets you back in balance. Now order two bottles and get $10 off your order. Sign up for monthly auto shipping and save 25%. Call 800-518-7615 or visit alkavision.com. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at alkavision.com. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This year, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is down $1 at $1,168 per ounce, and silver is up $0.05 cents at $15.91 per ounce. Bitcoin is currently trading at $275. US Halloween is almost upon us. Give your special ghosts and goblins a treat they won't soon forget, an Australian one-ounce silver spider. To order yours today, give us a call at 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, big news about wiretapping laws, or at least the laws here in New Hampshire. It's pretty, uh, pretty great news. And it should have an effect maybe on some other places as well. It's a pretty pretty important court decision, in my opinion, uh, although it is a lower court. We'll give you the details on that. You can also join us here. Plus, what happened to Chewbacca in Ukraine? He was out campaigning for Darth Vader, and apparently the Ukraine police did not appreciate that, and they put him under arrest. Uh, it's Ian and Mark in the studio with you here tonight on the live Sunday edition. We started out discussing immigration, and that's what Steve in New Jersey wants to talk about uh, here. Steve, you were bringing up the claim that immigrants don't want to so-called assimilate. Illegal immigrants, he was specific. Oh, were you were you specific no, that it's only no. illegal immigrants, Steve? It seems that illegal immigrants don't want to assimilate into the country. Um, how can you tell the difference? Immig- immig- how can you tell the difference? Do, do you think illegal immigrants would be honest with you about whether they were illegal or legal? Well, no, but I, I think you're I think that you're bending the questions, and I think that you are in fact pro illegal immigration. I am absolutely pro free people crossing uh, imaginary lines in the sand. in the sand. Oh, he just hung up. I was ready to have a conversation with that guy. 
Well, I'm so sorry. We're, we have a difference of opinion, so you better hang up and run away. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But, Mark, you were, you were saying something about— well, Let's uh, just address well, assimilation for a second. Well, you mentioned Little Italy, but you didn't really have a chance to explain that. Right. So when it comes to, like, for instance, let's look at Little Italy. Nobody at this point is going to question the, uh, you know, the, the how good of an idea it is that uh, Italian-Americans immigrated here— uh, over 100 years ago, or Irish or anything like that, they're going to say that was a good thing, ultimately, for the United States. But I bet you could find some people who don't like uh, Italians and Irish people. You'll find, you, th there's no, no doubt, there's some small margin of people out there. But, um, you know, today, when you're in the midst of it, it looks different. First-generation immigrants ha often have a difficult time with the language, especially if those first-generation immigrants are, say, I don't know, hounded by the law and fear for their uh, safety and freedom, right? Now, you know, you could say you shouldn't come here if you don't want to fear for your freedom. Well, I get it. You know, you, maybe you want a police state. I'm, I understand. Um, so as they get, you know, as they have kids and their kids have kids, then things change. You'll find very few Italian-Americans today, people whose uh, you know, grandparents or great-grandparents immigrated here, who can speak Italian with any fluidity. Don't you have some Italian blood? Um, I Mediterranean uh, Spanish. Okay. Um, but it doesn't really make a difference. My great-grandmother, Traub, came here from Germany, mm -hmm. and she spoke fluent German. What about you? I don't... My grandmother didn't. Her child mm. didn't because she didn't believe in... Um, she didn't want her speaking at, um, at home, so she made her speak English. Got it. And that's how it goes with immigrants today. But wait You'll a minute, find Mark. Their children speak both languages, and they're... Grandchildren don't even know how to speak Spanish. That may be true, and uh, from what I understand, it is true when you look at the numbers. But you said there's no more Little Italy. Is it true that doesn't exist anymore? I don't think so. I think because just, there's still Chinatowns and things like that, right? You know, you're going to see, um, right? I, I I agree, and um, you know, I suspect that's an ethnic issue. Why is it? And that what Chinese the hell's people... wrong with Chinatown? I love Chinatown. I I enjoy going to places like that too. You still get... have a tremendous amount of immigration from China as yeah. opposed to. Um, you know, say Chinese that immigrated here in the 1880s. But but ultimately, what's wrong with somebody wanting to keep speaking a you know their native-born tongue? There's nothing wrong with that inherently. If somebody wants to live around others who speak their uh, their language, that's totally fine. People should be able to have the freedom to associate with one another. And when people are coming here from another place. It could be a good thing for them to have a community of people who can actually speak their language to help them integrate help them, yeah. into this society over the generations. You'll also find that um, you know, when, when, when discussing this issue with people that they, they want uh, assimilation, and I think assimilation's best, but one, another thing that uh, sort of prevents assimilation are so social welfare programs. So if, for instance, you can come here and your wife stays home and takes care of the kids and you and the male goes out and works, it's going to be more difficult for her to assimilate into what is sort of normal female culture in the United States. She's not going to have the English speaking girlfriends that maybe she picks up at work and those sorts of things. So when. Uh, you know, the social welfare programs aren't present, you're more likely to find the women working in the marketplace. And when they're working in the marketplace, they're chit-chatting with other women who have their culture and it's spreading and assimilation and all these sorts of things. So government, again, preventing assimilation. All right, so you can bring up whatever is on your mind. Let's talk to Randy in California, listening via LRN.FM. Hey, Randy. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Actually, uh, sorry to kind of divert a little bit, um, but I sure. started listening to the podcast last night on uh, the war on drugs and uh, how it's affected the country um, and the legality of drugs and what, you know, and creating them to be legalized. <laughs> and I specifically wanted to talk about uh, prescription drug addiction, which is the new epidemic that has taken over the country, uh, because I personally was addicted to prescription drugs as well as other illegal drugs um, in my early 20s, mm -hmm. and the basis for me basically to start using drugs was my doctor prescribed me ridiculous amounts of opiate medication after I had um, a surgery when I was 17, which then caused me to basically spiral into drug addiction, which was pushed forward by my doctor over the course of three years. Uh, kept prescribing me 
opiate medication when I didn't need it at all because the doctors get kickback for having patients on opiate medication. And as much as drugs are illegal and everybody talks about them, um, through my experiences, I've realized that there's an incredible amount of middle-aged, middle-class, I'm a middle-class white person, so adults that are addicted to prescription drugs whose views on is completely hypocritical that they look down on heroin addicts as they're the trash of the society when they themselves are addicted to prescription medications and how insane this whole drug pres- prescription drug nightmare that's going so on in America. When, uh, when you were on and addicted to these prescription opiates, did the doctors at some point cut you off and you found, your, found yourself searching for them on the black market? Yeah, immediately. I was 20 years old. I was in college. I had been legally prescribed prescription medication for three years. I was completely addicted, obviously, because day after day I was taking these prescription medications. Mm -hmm. And at the time, for about two and a half years, I was taking them as prescribed, not abusing them. You know, but the medication I was on, uh, Oxycontin, is is stronger than heroin. When I moved, when I was in college, I dropped out of college, couldn't function when my doctor one day says, oh, okay, you know, it's been a couple years, you've gone through physical therapy, you're okay, boom, you're, you know, you're done. And then I feel like, hell, I felt like I wanted to die when you're coming off those. But I then, obviously, searched for other drugs. Hey, you know, and then I, you know, obviously someone saw how I felt. I was talking to my friends and they said, hey, you know, you can buy these prescription meds on the black market, which are expensive. And, and he then, knew somebody, and he pointed you in the in that direction? Or, or he said, oh, or you can get heroin. Yeah, well, it actually took me a while to get heroin. I had a big thing because of it was heroin. My God, you know, it's this evil drug, it's this illegal drug. So I spent tons of money on prescription meds, which is what led me to see these middle-class people buying them illegally prescription meds because they took all of their prescribed meds and, and they wanted more them. Exactly. you know randy amazed. we've been uh covering this topic off and on over the last decade that we've been doing the show and i mean it's certainly no consolation that other people uh, have the same story but man it is so common i mean so many people have been prescribed these uh, prescription opiates They've been cut off because at some point the doctor has to stop prescribing it due to, you know, the DEA threatening them, basically. And then they go into the black market. Then they start paying $20 a pill for them. And before they know it, they're selling them in order to uh, try to make the, the costs because it's super expensive. What was at your peak? What was your habit? What were you taking? Uh, I was taking Opana, which is uh, hydromorphone, which is basically what they give to cancer patients when they're dying. Uh, well, my whole I went. I live in Southern California. I went to Mexico to buy all my drugs, mostly. Um, so you were so smuggling them. Then, you were smuggling them back yeah, into the I, country. Uh, yeah, I smuggled drugs across the border every day for about two years, uh, <sighs> which is I don't I don't want to. Where'd you hide them? Radio. <laughs> I honestly, it went from. Oh no, you don't know how easy it is to walk across the border in Tijuana with 500 pills, you know, in your pocket. They don't. As a normal awesome. way, if they do not trust you. But <laughs> this time, that's not why I came on the radio to talk about my drug smuggling days. It was a I great call, lucky. though, Randy. Thanks for making it tonight. Yeah, no, whoa, whoa, wait, oh, you oh, can call oh, us sorry. another time. I appreciate it. Call us I any have, other night I you want to. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can join us. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof money to the people where it belongs. 
Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom in the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always-on reliability. Their nerds know business and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work.it slash FTL. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, October 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.84 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,165 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $290. Antiwar.com reports following Friday's talks in Vienna, which he labeled consultations, Secretary of State John Kerry revealed that the next official talks on Syria could begin as soon as next week to discuss some ideas, which he says were floated on Friday, but which remain secret. The meeting on Friday involved Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and the U.S., though Kerry suggested other nations might be allowed to be involved in the actual talks. When asked, he would not rule out Iranian involvement, though it seems at this point there is no serious consideration toward involving Syria itself. Iranian involvement would likely be opposed by Saudi Arabia, who in their own statement said there was no consensus on Assad at Vienna, likely reflecting Saudi and U.S. demands for immediate regime change and Russia's opposition to that. While the U.S. did not rule out Iranian involvement, there have been reports earlier this month that Kerry very much wants to exclude Western European nations from the talks, claiming France, Britain, and Germany are not directly involved and should remain sidelined. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports at least three people were killed and 34 injured when a car plowed into and through a crowd during Oklahoma State University's homecoming parade. The 25-year-old driver of the car was arrested and charged with driving under the influence after careening into the crowd along the parade route around 11.30 a.m. Conda Walker, who was attending the homecoming celebration, told the Stillwater News Press, At first, we thought it was part of the show. Then, people were flying 30 feet into the air like ragdolls. The driver, Adesha Chambers, drove her 24 14 Hyundai Elantra into an unmanned police motorcycle and then into the crowd at the termination point of the parade, according to a report from the city. Police reported three people died while eight critically wounded and nine seriously injured were taken to the hospital and 17 walking wounded later arrived at Stillwater Medical Center. Stillwater Police Captain Kyle Gibbs told NBC News that the count of injured may go up because some members of the crowd were treated at the parade scene because of emergency personnel participation in the event. Gibbs said he did not know if Chambers drove into the crowd intentionally or if she lost control of her car. However, the investigation was being treated as a homicide. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Louisiana voters headed to the polls on Saturday to choose a successor to Governor Bobby Jindal, but experts and surveys suggest the race may go to a runoff after a faltering campaign by early favorite Republican U.S. Senator David Vitter. The contest, dubbed a jungle primary with candidates from all parties on the same ballot, has generated little interest from the electorate, making it unlikely the primary vote will result in an outright winner, according to analysts. If no candidate garners at least 50% of the vote on Saturday, the top two finishers will meet in a runoff on November 21st. Vitter has mounted a frontrunner's campaign even as he dropped in the polls. The two-term U.S. Senator, dogged by a 2007 prostitution scandal, participated in only two of the eight gubernatorial debates and shunned the media. Some polls in October showed Democrat John Bell Edwards, the minority leader of the Louisiana State House, beating Vitter in a head-to-head matchup. Even so, University of New Orleans political science professor Ed Chervenak said the Democrat would face an uphill battle to win the governorship in the deeply Republican state. Light early voting numbers have led pollsters to forecast low overall voter turnout, which tends to favor Republicans in Louisiana. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. At work, at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. Retailing for $49.99, the nose buds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table. It smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a... Really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. Hey, yeah, that's right. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Chewbacca arrested in Ukraine after campaigning for Darth Vader. This is a real story. Coming from RT.com. Also, some good news about an awful wiretapping uh, statute. It's not quite uh, dead, but it may be uh, the beginning of the end for it. And we'll tell you what a judge has decided about wiretapping here in a moment when it comes to recording the police. 855 450 free. That's our toll free number. 855 450 3733. With you in studio on this live Sunday edition, it's Ian and Mark. Let's go to Zach in Illinois to start things out this hour. Zach, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Go ahead. So I had a question about activism, actually. You guys have done, or at least you specifically, Ian, have done a lot more than this than I have. And I had a question on whether or not you thought this is good activism. All right. Okay? So at my local community college that I attend, I recently got a video of a police officer that is like one of the school police officers. Um, well, let me preface this with a little information. So this school is one of those that has like a tobacco-free policy, including vaporizers, which is what? you cannot use. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? <laughs> exactly. Wait, wait, wait. Exactly. Not even outside? Exactly. This, yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. Nowhere <laughs> on campus can you get... Can you use any tobacco product, including vaporizers? And, and this is a community like, college. Yes. Wow. Yes. It's crazy. That is crazy. And this is you know this is in this is in Illinois, so that that's kind of like you know. Wow. All they right. Like to prohibit you from doing things. I mean, so, I can see why they don't mind. want you vaporizing like right in the middle of class. This huge plume of vapor <laughs> rising up from one particular uh, fedora wearing, uh, you know, class, uh, uh, you know, student or whatever. I get that. But when you're talking about going outside yeah. and using a vaporizer, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Crazy. I know. 
So friends of mine have gotten tobacco tickets. They're only like $15, but, it, you know, it's still ridiculous. They've gotten tobacco tickets for vaporizing on far fields that are actually, you know, 800, 900 feet away from the school. They've gotten tobacco tickets for vaporizing outside of the school. So wow. I got a video of a police officer. Of a, I saw a guy vaping, and it was actually ended up being a professor, but he was vaping outside right next to a door. And I'm like, oh, interesting. And then I saw a police officer turn a corner and beeline towards this guy. So I got a video of the police officer walking out and having a, like a 30-second conversation with the guy. And then they both walk back in, and I follow them a second. And then the police officer goes, yeah, you know, you don't want to make anyone mad. And then they go their separate ways. So, you know, obviously the guy didn't get a ticket. So I got a video of this. And I'm like, so this is like my question to you is should I – continue to get video footage of police officers at this school giving other people tobacco tickets, but not, you know, school officials or professors. Um, and then kind of, you know, asking the police officers, like, do you really, like, is this a law? Like, or is this a rule that you're actually going to enforce? Or are you just going to, you know, willy nilly be like, oh, well, you're a professor, so I'm not going to give you a ticket. My only concern is that the result of this is going to be more enforcement of this rule. Well, I mean, it certainly is going to maybe result in you being targeted for enforcement because they'll recognize you as the kid with the camera. Uh, so there's that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you're willing to take that risk, then it could be instructive to point out the the inconsistencies in their, uh, you know, in their enforcement of this, whether it will result in any kind of policy change. I, I don't really know. And certainly you could be right that it'll just result in them writing more tickets. But then again, maybe if the teachers are actually getting tickets, they'll be motivated to do something to stop the policy, uh, perhaps. You know, so who knows what uh, what could come out of it? I don't see the harm in, in continuing to record if you can somehow you know, perchance find another encounter like that. I mean, you know, how likely you are to be there when they're harassing or, you know, talking to some teacher who's vaping seems like it would be a relatively unlikely thing uh, for, for you to encounter again. But, you know, I can't see the harm in doing that. I wouldn't say it's going to result in any sort of magical change in policy there on the campus. And I'm guessing that it's, you know, basically it's their rules. It's not a law. It's, uh, it's likely the campus rules. Yeah. So let okay. us know how that so, goes, Zach. Anything else you want to share about it? No, it was just um, that was just my one point of concern was that I don't know if this is something that anybody else has, or specifically you, that you've encountered where you've done some activism surrounding one, one rule or law where it's not always enforced, and then the result is that there's more enforcement because that's obviously the last thing that I want is that everybody who has ever seen with a cigarette, a can of dip, or a vaporizer gets some ridiculous ticket. It seems to me that that's likely to be what happens. Is more enforcement. More enforcement. Um, at the very least, what that's you're what showing here is you're showing, um, you know, people who would see the video besides the uh, the staff. I mean, you know, like. <laughs> I think that most people on staff understand that they believe that they should be given some kind of preference over the students. But do students believe that? Do students believe that a rule should be enforced uh, you know, on professors the same way they sh it should be on students? It's pretty obvious that they consider the students to be the profit centers here and that they're going to they're just getting more money out of them this way. And, and if you if you break this rule, uh, presumably they could terminate your, your, you know, your your education, right? They could they could cancel your classes and boot you out. Probably if you do it enough times, they'll probably just be like, give you the boot and kick you out. Thanks for the call tonight, Zach. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. I, th I say do it anyway, though. I mean, just because it's it's an interesting sh study of sort of class on campus. Like, oh, well, the teachers can vape, but the rest of us can't. I think that would make for a, a nice little comparison. I wonder, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that much. I didn't switch colleges or anything like that, but I wonder whether it would put his grades in danger, even of the ones that he currently has. Would he be able to transfer to another school? Because, you know, college isn't something that is that difficult to come by. There are lots mm. of places that provide you with college. However, Certainly plenty of community colleges. Yeah, co community college not that big of a deal. But if the community college, for whatever reason, pencil whips his grades because he has messed with the authority structure there, mm -hmm. no college likes that. No college is like, you know what we need? We need a troublemaker. A troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. you know, that, that well, part could be a risk. problem. I mean, there's always risk when you do activism. Yeah, but what's the reward targeted? here? 
there really isn't much reward. I mean, you're, you're not the reward likely to is that uh, the Ian likes conflict. Um, that's, that's not true, actually. I don't like oppression, and if people are being oppressed, then I think that someone needs to stand up for those people. Now, that's not saying I like conflict. I'd much prefer those people be left alone. But as usual, I get blamed because I'm the one who's speaking out, and it's act as it's uh, people act as though oh, the activist is the one who's creating the conflict. No, no, it's the people who are writing those tickets that are creating the conflict. They're the ones who are harassing innocent, peaceful people who just simply want to vape outside. Yes. Leave those people alone. But you are recommending. You're saying I say go for it. Um, that was you know, that's as I recall, it's a quote, and you're yeah. recommending that a student who has a great deal on the line no nah, it's just community college yeah but that's the college is useless forget about that crap really do you think he might be going to be to get a doctor um, to get his uh, to become an md or i don't know for most people engineer? it's pretty useless though wouldn't you agree i think that uh, for the vast majority of people they don't need higher education right. the college has been uh, turned because the fact that everybody's I mean, supposed is... to go hold on everybody's supposed to go that you've now turned it into 13th through 16th grade yeah however I will say that there are certainly people who need to have college degrees. If you want to be a college professor, sure. if you want to be a lawyer. Like 1% of people or something like that. I don't that. know what the percentage is. I would say it's lower than 10. Yeah. I mean, how many people have college degrees who are actually working in the field in which they have a college degree? Um, also, the government and lar large corporations will sort of use this as a, a yardstick for people that can complete something. So we need yep. to, you to have a bachelor's degree. It doesn't need to be in the thing that we're asking sure. you to, to work in, just a bachelor's degree of some sort. And, I mean, it is something worth noting that one can complete uh, college while in a haze of alcohol. I mean, that is a real <laughs> accomplishment. Yeah, I, I will give you that. All right, so uh, our number here, if you want to join us, maybe a comment on tobacco-free policies, including vaporizers. Hello, vaporizers don't have tobacco in them. They have sometimes often have nicotine. But what's interesting— they, Yeah, usually do. The vapor liquid that they have doesn't necessarily have to contain nic nicotine. So— they right. it could contain can, uh, cannabis or it could just not have anything. It could just be that's true. flavored glycerin, and yeah, you can get the zero percent stuff. I'd ask you, is there? <laughs> why is there a school policy against me just standing there? And as a matter of fact, now that's a good idea, Mark. You are thinking. I like this. So here's here you go. Civil disobedience. That's what he should do. Load up the vaporizer with the zero percent stuff. And then ask them to prove that there's nicotine in there. Because if they're going to give him that ticket, they're going to have to prove their case, right? Of course, the college probably doesn't have the same rules as court. 855-450 free. Attention. A very wealthy U.S. benefactor now reveals money-making secrets used by the rich and powerful. Credit success secrets once used only at the top levels of business are now being revealed to the general public. Imagine having a business that runs itself, puts money in your pocket, so you never have to go to work. Imagine someone else gave you the money to start. Secret groups are pulling for your success by giving perfect scores in both business and personal credit. They show you how to get good credit and how to use good credit. If you have bad credit, no credit, or your credit isn't as good as that other guy's credit, it really doesn't matter anymore. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many get cash in pocket right now. Call now for free information on how Credit Success Secrets Revealed can put money in your pocket so you never work again. Call 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or go to creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. Sciatica, lower back pain, hip pain, poor posture. If you suffer from any of these problems, get ready to relax. Introducing an amazing product that's been in the market for over 25 years, the Sacro Wedgie. It was invented by a football coach using a common sense osteopath technique. He created this device to help his athletes by isolating and supporting the sacrum, which is the keystone of our anatomy. This wedge-shaped bone is in the center of our hips, where a lot of pain starts. Simply relax 20 minutes daily on the amazingly simple Sacro Wedgie and let gravity do the work helping muscles rebalance and start releasing nerves sit in the sacro wedgie at the computer or while traveling to help correct posture to finally help relieve those stubborn aches and pains for only 33.95 it's made in the usa so click the family-owned website at sacrowedgie.com spelled c-c-r-o-w-e-d-g-y.com or call 1-800-737-9295 that's 1-800-737-9295 relax your back pain away with the sacro wedgie Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. 
Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logo apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It is the Free Talk Live Live Sunday edition. You're invited here to join us. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Ridiculous vaporizer restrictions. You're going to see more of it uh, because people love to treat vaporizers as though they're just as bad and deadly and dangerous as cigarettes, even though there's really no evidence for it. Uh, 855-450-3733. That's our toll-free number. We've got Skype as well at Skype username LRN.FM. Mark, this is a big week for you. You're heading to Vegas. Heading to Vegas for the first ever Free Talk Live broadcast. Broadcast. Broadcans. Broadcans. You're bringing your cans. Broadcans from the Sin City. Uh, so I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it's at the Bitcoin Investor Conference. So if you uh, know anything about Bitcoin, you probably should... Get on over there to the Bitcoin Investor Conference. They're going to have a lot of great speakers. Brian Sovereign, Bitcoin Bell, Paul Pui, Joseph Von Perling, Stephen Michaels. It's going to be a star-studded cast. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of emceeing work, plus, of course, Free Talk Live. So I'm excited. Please come on out and uh, see what's going on. It's at the D Hotel in downtown Las Vegas. They do accept Bitcoin there at the D Hotel. And it's October the 29th and 30th. That's Thursday and Friday. Bitcoininvestor.com to get your tickets. Bitcoininvestor.com. You buy now, you save uh, not having to pay a higher price at the door. Bitcoininvestor.com. All right. So toll-free number is 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE. Uh, we'll have to look into the e-cigarette news because I actually haven't seen the news stories, but that doesn't mean they're not coming out. They're always in the news, just doesn't necessarily come across our desks here. So what is the latest in the world of regulating the e-cigarettes? You know that's what's coming, right? That's what these politicians want to do. We've seen it happen in bigger cities like New York City. Uh, and I don't remember the other ones, but New York cities, you know, if they go first, then other cities will follow where e-cigarettes are being treated or vaporizers are being treated as though they're cigarettes. And the people who are using them are being relegated to the sort of second class citizen role that cigarette smokers have been relegated to. The cigarette smokers were relegated to that class ostensibly on the idea that their smoke is dangerous Second to people. Second smoke, right. The idea that being in the same room as someone who is smoking a cigarette is somehow putting the other person's health, who is not smoking the cigarette, in jeopardy. 
And of course, the evidence for that is is real thin. Like the studies that were done, uh, they were. I remember the Penn and Teller's BS show looked into those and found that they were basically mis. They've been looked into pretty thoroughly, and they were uh, crappy studies to to begin with. Right. But, so you know, you could basically throw all that nonsense out. But at well, least it kind of makes sense, right? Smoke is bad. You don't want to be in the same room with the smoke. I wouldn't and, want to be locked in a car with uh, somebody who's uh, chain smoking. Yeah. But that's entirely different than vaporizing too. Yeah, and uh, well, and of course, the people that are against the the use of vaporizers in businesses and you know inside places, they will argue not not they can't really argue too hard that it's more dangerous because there really isn't much evidence that shows that that's the case at all. Uh, but they can argue on the idea that it's bad for the children to see it. They don't want the children to see people putting something to their lips and pulling it away and exhaling some sort of a plume of vapor. Or something that could be confused yep, that's for smoke. A, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's yeah. That is ultimately. It what looks it too down. much like smoking. And uh, and the you know the other concern is that it's it smells better than smoking, so it may attract children towards wanting to use it. And you know that's not a bad argument because it does actually smell pleasant in uh, in many cases, and they do have fruity flavors, which in theory could be an attractive thing. Uh, to children, you think they have something there, Mark? Is that a, a legitimate reason to ban the use of uh, e-cigarettes? I don't think that it's a legitimate reason to ban it, but I think it should be up to the business. I think every business should be able to make that decision. Um, when you're talking about colleges, on the other hand, you know, across the board, they're using, say, police. Uh, they got the university police and these kind of things. It just it just smacks too much of the government, you know. Mm. Our toll-free number, if you want to join us here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Here's some fresh news on that particular topic, and then we can talk about Chewbacca being arrested here in a few moments. Uh, fresh from thehill.com, this story came out just two days ago. The FDA, Food and Drug Administration, guess what? They have sent their final rule to regulate additional tobacco products, including electronic cigarettes and cigars, for White House review, the rule, which was first proposed more than a year ago, was sent to the White House Office of Management and Budget Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. Boy, that's a mouthful. White House Office of Management and Budget's Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. Or whammy. Yeah. <laughs> Wombo. I think that's what it would be. Uh, but it could be weeks before the rule is actually realized. FDA spokes bureaucrat Michael Felberbaum said the Office of Management and Budget is required to review all significant regulatory actions and has 90 calendar days to do so. Quote, however, this time frame can be extended to allow for additional interagency discussion. And at this time, the FDA cannot provide any further comment. The American Lung Association is hoping for an expedited review. Erica Sward, the group's assistant vice president of national advocacy, says, quote, we remain deeply troubled that it's taken 18 months from the time the proposal was released to now. We need to move forward in protecting kids and public health. What a bunch of hogwash. How long does it take to get a drug through the FDA? And she wants this. Years. Uh, she wants some kind of rule telling people they can't use vaporizers in less than 18 months. Well, <laughs> I mean, please. There are people dying terminal patients that die waiting for drugs to come out that might ease their suffering a little bit and this lady's all upset that she can't get people's freedom faster ms sward said the lung association is hoping the final rule will give the fda the authority to truly regulate all tobacco products under the proposed to rule get the american lung association the authority to regulate yeah. this uh uh, the, these issues. She said there was a loophole for certain premium cigars saying, quote, there's no such thing as a safe tobacco product and certainly not a safe cigar. FDA needs to have the basic authority over all really, tobacco Really? You don't think there's products. any difference between inhaling a cigarette and swooshing the cigar smoke around in your mouth? I mean, I, I just hate getting lied to. And this is what the American Lung Association's just come down to. I want you to help people not get cancer. Mm -hmm. But please, for God's sake, tell the truth. There's a difference between cigars and cigarettes. Yes, usage matters. If you inhale a cigar, it's not going to be really great for you. But consider that the tobacco that hasn't been uh, modified and sprayed with all kinds of chemicals might be different than the cigarette. So what 
do the new rules propose? Uh, the story here from The Hill doesn't get into those details, but there is another one here from Fortune Magazine, and it is entitled, How New Rules Could Kill the Vaping Boom. We'll I'm get sure. In, we'll get into the proposals here, but one more quote from Ms. Sward. She says, there's no such thing as a safe tobacco product and certainly not a safe cigar. FDA needs to have the basic authority over all tobacco products to make sure kids aren't buying them and warning labels, uh, warning labels are required. Well, clearly, if the FDA can finally have total control over tobacco and all the regulations, that will finally keep it out of the hands of children. Whew. Boy. You know, Finally, the kids are safe. I've never found anybody who reads warning labels more than kids do. Well, I mean, if you can put it in the FDA's hands, marks uh, or Mark, then the kids will never be able to touch a cigarette because the FDA will wave a magic wand called regulation, and that will make it so kids just can't touch them. It'll zap the kids when they reach out to grab the packs from the adults who buy them for them. It's Free Talk Live. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. A lot of people's lives and bodies are out of balance. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops optimize pH level and get rid of harmful waste and acid. Just a few drops in water restores vibrance and energy and gets you back in balance. Now order two bottles and get $10 off your order. Sign up for monthly auto shipping and save 25%. Call 800-518-7615 or visit alkavision.com. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at alkavision.com. The Supreme Court sidekick, Kid Justice, is killed by mad genius Dr. Contempto. Thousands of elderly Japanese Americans are rounded up for an internment camp's 70th reunion. And a report confirms the habitat of Bengal tigers is now down to a studio apartment in Jaipur, India. As it was once prophesied in the weekly news recap videos of old, here now it emerges before your very eyes. This is The Onion Week in Review. Local man Matthew Hunker announced this week that he has such strong brand loyalty to Mazda that he's willing to kill for the Japanese car brand. Hunker told reporters that if he hears anyone say anything negative about Mazda's cutting-edge features, or if anyone places any other car brand above the award-winning line of 2013 Mazdas, he will, quote, personally beat them to death. You think I wouldn't slit your goddamn throat in the name of Mazda? You think I'm f***ing around? Go ahead, say something bad about the top-rated Mazda 6, or the award-winning CX-5. See what f***ing happens. I f***ing dare you. You think I'm afraid to go to jail? This is the Onion News Network. BlakeDevelopment.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-844. For site one two three. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. 
See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Join us right here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you are a vapor, you use an e-cigarette or a vaporizer, whatever you prefer to call it, a vape pen, I've heard some people uh, refer to it as. If you're using a vaporizer and you're not yet aware of the regulations that are being proposed to basically destroy your hobby uh, or your addiction, uh, your delivery system, I guess, your preferred delivery system for your addiction, some make it into a hobby, though. They're, like, yeah. really into it. They Some get, are really into it, yeah. Yeah, they, they, uh, they actually go to vape meetings. There's uh, the <laughs> New England Vapors here in... We're in Keene, New Hampshire. And I remember uh, was at a local bar just for another reason, and there was all... The, there's actually was, like, a, a cloud of vapor in there. And normally when somebody's vaporizing uh, nicotine or whatever it is they're vaporizing, even if it's cannabis. Normally, when someone's using a vaporizer, if they're six feet away from you, you can't really tell. I mean, yeah, you can see the cloud coming out you know, as they're exhaling, but unless they're breathing it directly on you... It's not smoke. That's really the... Right. The, yeah, it's just not smoke. You just can't really... You know, It doesn't have the same presence in the air as far as the particles or whatever. It's just not as noticeable. In the case of the vape club meeting, though, there were probably, I don't know, 40 or 50 people in the bar. And since they were all vaping, you could definitely uh, detect it in that particular case. But unlike smoke, it's actually pleasant, in my opinion, to uh, to inhale or to be in the secondhand vape, if you will. They sound like a, they smell like a varying degrees like of candy. Uh, yeah. Fruit. Just, um, you know. Uh, air, air fresheners. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Uh, I want to also let you know that you can go to uh, Pro XPN to get some uh, amazing protection on the internet. Uh, we do use the internet, but generally aren't using it in the way it was meant to be used, which is anonymous and without oversight. But Pro XPN can solve that for you. They encrypt your online data before it gets to your internet service provider. They offer OpenVPN, which is the gold standard of network encryption. And they've got apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and Linux support as well. So it's super easy to get started with Pro XPN and protect yourself online. You don't want your ISP knowing what you're doing. They can turn that information over to the government. They can sell that information to other corporations to market crap to you. Uh, just go to proxpn.com. Use code FTL50 and take back the privacy that is your right. FTL50 gets you 50% off of the regular monthly price for the lifetime of an annual account. It can be cheaper per month than a good cup of coffee. Plus, ProXPN, and this is super important, they don't keep any logs of your activities whatsoever. ProXPN.com, code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live, and 50 as in 50% off. We'll tell you more about the proposed regulations that are snaking their way through the federal government as we speak. Aaron is first, though, in Washington State. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello, Aaron. Hey, how's it going? Welcome, sir. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I was just calling to regarding the whole vaping thing. Um, I think it's saying that the American Lung Association uh, is so against this. Uh, this is an incredible uh, almost tool, and uh, I don't know what to say, but it's an incredible thing to help quit smoking. I smoked for seven years. Uh, when I found out my wife was pregnant, I went through everything to try to quit, you know, the patch, the gum, and every all of that. never really worked. And finally, my friend suggested vaping. And it said, look, you know, this could help. Um, I tried it, and it miracle cures. You cut out just a moment a moment there. You said miracle what? Almost a cure to my smoking. I haven't smoked a cigarette in, you know, probably uh, probably 16 months. 16 months? 16 months I haven't had a cigarette. Tell me, tell me this. Uh, were you a heavy smoker previously? Like how many packs a day? Yeah. A pack a day. Pack a day. That's pretty pretty standard stuff. Good enough. Uh, did you yeah. feel like, because some people are going to say that vaping is still not good for you, and I'm not saying it's good for you, but did you feel like when you started vaping, could you notice that you were breathing any easier, or are you about, about where you were when you were on cigarettes? 
No, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny you said because I couldn't really run um, much or do physical. Like, I was very, I did water polo when I was in high school um, and well through college uh, and even playing golf. Uh, it, I would get winded. I would get tired after I started smoking. And once I started vaping, I'd say it took about three weeks, three to six weeks, you know, to have my lungs heal. But since then, I I feel so much better. I breathe easier. I, would, I used to wake up at night coughing, hmm. spitting up phlegm when I smoked. I no longer do that. Um, as well as just the whole deal with vaping is, you know, I don't I have a 10-month-old, almost 11-month-old daughter. I don't smell anymore. I, when I would smoke, I would come inside, wash my hands, wash my face. Yeah, it's gross. It, but I would still smell, and it's bad for her. Um, I know secondhand smoke, there are some myths involved with it. But, you know, a baby sitting there breathing, secondhand smoke, you know, the smell off your person is not a good thing. I no longer have that. Um, as well as uh, I don't, the craving was the biggest thing. With the gum and the patch, I still craved the physical aspect of smoking to where with vaping, I'm down to three, three milligram to zero milligram now. Uh, nicotine level. What did you when start at? Now, the, the milligrams you're talking about when you buy the vape fluid or the uh, you know the attachments for a vape uh, vaporizer, they're mill they're measured in milligrams or isn't it usually milliliters? But uh, either way, it's that's how they measure them. And uh, what did you right. start at? A lot of people start at like 24 or 18 milligrams. Yeah, correct. It's uh, you know it's milliliters is per bottle, and then you get mill per milligram of nicotine contained uh, in that. Okay bottle of, of, of liquid, you get 15, 30 milliliter bottles, it just goes bigger, but the nicotine level is what, you, you know, is what is contained inside, Got it. and I started at uh, 20, 20, 18, 20, depending on the company, milligram nicotine, and, you know, I'm down to three, sometimes I do six, but about three milligrams of nicotine to my craving, and, you know, that, I could never, ever do that. With, with the gum, I chewed the gum constantly. I would have a lozenge in the back, plus you would chew the gum. And it, did, you know, it did not help to where it was that oral fixation that, sorry, my daughter just broke the left. It was that oral fixation that you crave with the gum and the patch. And that's what vaping helps eliminate is you can slowly bring down the milligram level, but get that oral fixation. But you're still sticking the, a stick in your mouth and it still satisfies that uh, hand to mouth. Something to do. Uh, addiction. You know, Aaron, I'm really glad to hear your story tonight, and it's it's a shame that people like the American Lung Association aren't heeding yeah, these stories. They just want you to smoke, apparently. <laughs> it's ridiculous. No, exactly. I, honestly, I think that's what it is. I think they've gotten paid out by the uh, cigarette companies. That the cigarette companies are getting killed by this, and they don't understand it. And they, you know, are they dying. though? I mean, doesn't uh, doesn't Philip Morris have the blue or something like that? Didn't they come out with one of these it, things? Yeah, and you know what's funny is I tried that for a long time. These ones you can buy at the gas station. They have all these, the blue, the vapor, all those, but they are terrible. I would smoke a blue in a night for real smokers to where with the vapor now, I, I've started creating my own vapor, my own flavors you can buy online, and it's so much cheaper. And I just started creating my own vapor to help, yeah. and that's what they don't like is it's an independent smoking apparatus they don't you're right they don't like that anyone can get into the game of of vaping right now as far as manufacturers are concerned and they want a restricted marketplace where only their vapor uh devices are available uh to people on online or uh in real life aaron uh thanks for your call tonight i appreciate your story and it's not he's not alone on that there are a lot of people who have that story where it's the vaporizers that have allowed them to quit smoking cigarettes. That's a huge public health benefit. That's true. He's uh, con- conjectured there that uh, that the American Lung Association is in cahoots with the uh, cigarette uh, manufacturers. I don't know if I believe that one. I don't know that I believe that one either. It doesn't really matter. They could just be a bunch of sanctimonious uh, people who yeah, no want to make sure that you quit the way they want you to quit. And that is counterproductive to what their goal is i'm just really sorry Whatever that is well the, the, their goal clearly is for you know it's lung health and i want people to have lung health too i hope that's what their goal is if their goal isn't lung health their goal may be to increase the budget for their uh, organization at this point 
It could be, I, I, I suppose. If there's always some boogeyman there's a lot, out there. There's a lot fight. of people giving them a lot of money that yeah. want to see lung health increased. And this is uh, contrary that. to lung health. The, the fact is, is there are a lot of people who are quitting smoking cigarettes um, in order to vape. And many of those people are actually quitting vaping too. This is a net benefit to society and people who stand in the way of it. I'd love to hear one good reason. Great. Call me at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without a Berkey system. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, The Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't pick on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Cryptocurrency and peer-to-peer -peer tech developments happen fast. Stay in the loop with The Daily Decrypt, a new video channel and podcast that will keep you informed of the latest in cryptocurrency, software apps, drones, 3D printing, and general technological coolness. Find The Daily Decrypt on YouTube and SoundCloud and be an early adopter of the future. The Daily Decrypt. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Yeah! 
This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here. The toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Mark, you were asking for someone to call the show who is in favor of banning vaping. Somebody who thinks that vaping is as dangerous or more dangerous, perhaps, than smoking cigarettes. I'd love to hear, um, you know, what the what the idea is, is because it seems to me that vaping is. Uh, you know, maybe not the greatest idea, but life is a terminal illness. Mm. Um, so, you know, why is it that they want to ban vaping, especially in you know public places? That there just seems to be so nanny state about it. Well, is it because of the children? What's your reason for it? If you support these vape bans, which you may see more of here in the next uh, you know eighteen months or something like that, the FDA is looking at some regulations that might kill the industry, according to Fortune magazine. We'll tell you about that here. Uh, in a moment, and you're welcome to join us as well. Toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. We also have Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. John is in New Hampshire. You can bring up anything you want. John, you're on with Ian and Mark on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hey, guys. I just barely found your show. Thanks. Welcome. Go ahead. I actually found it on YouTube. Fantastic. Um, Anyhow, I had a run-in with the local authorities uh, last Sunday. And they confiscated all my handguns. Um, they were all locked. Uh, I called them to have a girlfriend removed from my house or having an argument before it escalated. Mm-hmm. They demanded to come in. I wouldn't let them in. And they got belligerent, forced their way in. Two oh. more show up. Anyway, I refused to fill out a statement, so I was arrested. She filled out a statement. Nobody touched each other. Let me let me slow all. you down here for a moment. Some towns uh, in in different states and maybe states in general have a law that requires the police to make an arrest when a domestic call occurs, some sort of alleged domestic violence call. Uh, is is your town one of those towns where they have to take someone away in a in a pair of handcuffs? I have no idea, but they rummaged through my house, and I feel like I was violated. I don't think my I don't think my rights were covered at all. I agree. I uh, you called them, and then you tried to keep them from coming into the home, but they forced their way in. They pounded on my door with a flashlight. Volt. The door was bolted. I opened the bolt, and he pulled the door right open, charged right in. Yeah, that is uh, unacceptable in in my opinion. Now, I don't know if there's any kind of special rule that says that if it's a domestic call. Uh, that you know they have the right to come in or something like that, but if, but if you, you're the one who called, oh, yeah, you know, if you called, then you yeah, should my, be able to stop them at the door. Well, that was the thing. She was saying that she was going to leave. She started packing her things to get out, and uh, you know, she's uh, the problem is now is I have to wait six weeks. But meanwhile, I've lived in this town for 14 years and have never had a run in with the police department at all. You say you have to wait six weeks for what to get the guns back? For a court date, because now I'm a freaking criminal. What was the charge? Domestic violence. Uh, Mr. Meaner, hang on. Even though right even though you didn't hurt anybody, Calm. she didn't hurt you. You guys didn't touch no, each there was other. No physical contact. So what is the? Uh, how can you have domestic violence when there was no physical contact? Do the cops just believe that you did something that uh, you say you didn't do? Right. That's the way I'm seeing it. The problem is, is I can't afford a lawyer. I live check by check, week by week, like many other people. What um, does do you have some kind of statement made by her that says that there was no physical contact? I can't have any contact with her. Sign no contact assault. order. Yep, but you had said that she had spoken to the police and that uh, that there wasn't any physical like, contact. I'm just trying to make sure that she said that there was no physical. Yeah, I don't have that information yet. Okay. So have- when's your court date? You said six weeks out. Six weeks out. Is yesterday. that an arraignment date or is that uh, the actual trial? I'm assuming it's arraignment. So if you've not been to court, me. if you've not yet been to court on this charge, then it is likely an arraignment. Uh, so this isn't legal advice. I'm not an attorney, but I'll go ahead and you know suggest to you what I might do in in that circumstance. I mean, if you are in the right here and there's no real reason to go ahead and take a plea deal, I generally don't recommend taking the plea. Uh, I love the idea of not taking the plea and standing up for yourself in court, even if you can't afford an attorney. You can do some basics on your own, and one of the basics that everyone should know how to do is to file for discovery. 
So when you go into uh, when you go into the uh, the arraignment, and for those that don't know, an arraignment is your chance to either plead guilty or not guilty. And then if you go with not guilty, they'll schedule a trial for for you. Um, if it's a class A, you can get a jury trial in New Hampshire. Now, I don't know what the equivalents are in the other 49 states, but you might want to learn these things if, uh, if you ever are considering doing this. You know, find out what you, know, what you can get a jury trial on and what you can't. But uh, either way, I'd still take a bench trial anyway just to make them prove their case uh, in, in front of a judge. And if you don't take the plea deal initially, they might actually come back with a better plea deal later on where they drop the severity of the charge, maybe down to a violation or something like that where it's no big deal and it's a very small fine. That's always a possibility. So even if you wait and you take the, uh, a later plea deal, you'll usually get a better shake out of that. Uh, but further, once you go ahead and put in the not guilty at the arraignment, at that moment, you can also, since you'll be in court with the prosecutor, go ahead and file, uh, hand the prosecutor your notice of, uh, basically it's like a notice of, uh, of discovery, it's essentially requiring them to give you all of the evidence that they have against you. So if there's a police report that your girlfriend uh, essentially had an interview with the cops, they had to write a report about it, and they'll include that in your discovery. So you can then see what is going to be said about you when you finally get to trial. And that will give you some idea as to whether or not you want to continue on and go to trial or whether you want to go ahead and take a plea deal because the evidence against you is is too great. You know, obviously, if it's a he said, she said thing, you might end up being screwed because they might believe her over you unless she's completely uncredible, maybe a drug, drug addict or something like that. Uh, so I would say always file for discovery and get that information, get the evidence that they have against you, and then make a more educated decision about whether or not you should go on to uh, to a trial. What do you think, Mark? Um, I'm the the only thing I'd be scared of is is that um, you know, but she's got that uh, that that uh, second X chromosome, which uh, gives her some extra validity um, mm-hmm. in in this case. If she's making all kinds of spurious claims, um, then that's going to be bad news. However, if you can, if, if, you know, the way you've told the story to us is true and, you know, many people who have uh, done things, uh, you know, have stories that they've, uh, they made up to cover their tracks. But if what you've said is true is I'd stick to my guns all the way through and try to talk to her about this. Is you a, can't talk to her. It's a no contact order. That's at some gonna point get him or another, arrested. you'll be able to talk to her. If it's in a deposition or something like that, you'll be able to. T- I don't think you do depositions on criminal charges. Do you? Generally? She's going to need to be deposed, yeah. Huh. Okay, I guess I don't know much about that. Either way, the officer said, because I didn't fill out a statement. I refused to fill out a statement. I said, hey, Filling out a statement doesn't mean you beat anybody up. I know that. (laughs) Well, right, but there's no skin off the officer's back to charge you with something. They're not going to get punished, even if ultimately these charges get thrown out. Nobody's going to get fired over this. The the officers aren't going to get punished. One other thing I would do if I were you is at the same time that you file or at the same time you're in there delivering your not guilty plea along with uh, the notice for discovery, go ahead and put a motion in to return your guns, motion to return uh, property, confiscated property. And file that. And when, whenever you file motions, you always want to file one copy with the prosecutor and one copy with uh, with the court itself. That way, everybody kind of knows what you're what you're doing. And then it would be interesting, at least, to hear their reasons for not returning the guns. And the or the judge may order, you know, like you know, I don't know if what your criminal history is, but if it's relatively clean, he says it has. He's never had anything. Yeah, I mean, if it's relatively clean, then there's really should be no reason you shouldn't have your guns back, especially if she's not in the house with you at this point. I don't have any criminal history other than driving violation. Well, if that's the case, then that's even more of a reason to take this to trial. Because if you don't have a criminal history, then even if you get found guilty, the the penalty probably won't be too severe. Whereas if you had a rap sheet, the judge might hit you with a harder penalty if you get found guilty uh, in this case. Again, none of that's legal advice. It's just my experience in courts. But there there certainly are issues with uh, people who have domestic violence charges getting their guns back. Um, This may not be just an issue of not getting a felony. This may be an issue. you, you, You may want to take this to court just because you want to have guns in the future good luck john i appreciate your call tonight let us know how it goes will you thank you thanks for the call tonight uh yeah just found us on youtube that's pretty cool here we are we're also available on youtube yeah, by the YouTube way. videos get almost nothing as far as views. yeah it's true um but we're there and if you want to go and watch the uh, the webcam later on that's how you do it is through our youtube channel all three uh, hours of it including the the full commercial that's true run youtube.freetalklive.com will actually take you right to our youtube channel go ahead and hit the su- subscribe button i mean it doesn't hurt then we'll show up in your youtube feed and if you want 
you can watch that. We, we do appreciate the subscriptions. Yeah, that's true. And, of course, we've got a podcast and live streams and radio stations, over 150 of them. So there are a lot of great ways to listen to or consume and watch Free Talk Live. Just go to freetalklive.com. It's, by the way, a brand new website. We've had it redesigned here for 2015. It just launched. The new site just launched a couple of weeks ago. And I'm pretty excited about it. we got some uh, really cool changes coming soon to the AMP program, which I'm hoping to be able to tell you about sooner rather than later. 855 450 free. The vaping restrictions. We'll tell you about them coming up. The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. This year, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is down $1 at $1,168 per ounce, and silver is up $0.05 cents at $15.91 per ounce. Bitcoin is currently trading at $275. US Halloween is almost upon us. Give your special ghosts and goblins a treat they won't soon forget, an Australian one-ounce silver spider. To order yours today, give us a call at 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, October 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.84 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,165 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $290. Antiwar.com reports following Friday's talks in Vienna, which he labeled consultations, Secretary of State John Kerry revealed that the next official talks on Syria could begin as soon as next week to discuss some ideas, which he says were floated on Friday, but which remain secret. The meeting on Friday involved Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and the U.S., though Kerry suggested other nations might be allowed to be involved in the actual talks. When asked, he would not rule out Iranian involvement, though it seems at this point there is no serious consideration toward involving Syria itself. Iranian involvement would likely be opposed by Saudi Arabia, who in their own statement said there was no consensus on Assad at Vienna, likely reflecting Saudi and U.S. demands for immediate regime change and Russia's opposition to that. While the U.S. did not rule out Iranian involvement, there have been reports earlier this month that Kerry very much wants to exclude Western European nations from the talks, claiming France, Britain, and Germany are not directly involved and should remain sidelined. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. 
UPI reports at least three people were killed and 34 injured when a car plowed into and through a crowd during Oklahoma State University's homecoming parade. The 25-year-old driver of the car was arrested and charged with driving under the influence after careening into the crowd along the parade route around 11.30 a.m. Conda Walker, who was attending the homecoming celebration, told the Stillwater News Press, At first, we thought it was part of the show. Then, people were flying 30 feet into the air like ragdolls. The driver, Adesha Chambers, drove her 2014 Hyundai Elantra into an unmanned police motorcycle and then into the crowd at the termination point of the parade, according to a report from the city. Police reported three people died while eight critically wounded and nine seriously injured were taken to the hospital and 17 walking wounded later arrived at Stillwater Medical Center. Stillwater Police Captain Kyle Gibbs told NBC News that the count of injured may go up because some members of the crowd were treated at the parade scene because of emergency personnel participation in the event. Gibbs said he did not know if Chambers drove into the crowd intentionally or if she lost control of her car. However, the investigation was being treated as a homicide. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Louisiana voters headed to the polls on Saturday to choose a successor to Governor Bobby Jindal, but experts and surveys suggest the race may go to a runoff after a faltering campaign by early favorite Republican U.S. Senator David Vitter. The contest, dubbed a jungle primary with candidates from all parties on the same ballot, has generated little interest from the electorate, making it unlikely the primary vote will result in an outright winner, according to analysts. If no candidate garners at least 50% of the vote on Saturday, the top two finishers will meet in a runoff on November 21st. Vitter has mounted a frontrunner's campaign even as he dropped in the polls. The two-term U.S. Senator, dogged by a 2007 prostitution scandal, participated in only two of the eight gubernatorial debates and shunned the media. Some polls in October showed Democrat John Bell Edwards, the minority leader of the Louisiana State House, beating Vitter in a head-to-head -head matchup. Even so, University of New Orleans political science professor Ed Chervenak said the Democrat would face an uphill battle to win the governorship in the deeply Republican state. Light early voting numbers have led pollsters to forecast low overall voter turnout, which tends to favor Republicans in Louisiana. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Thousands took to the streets to protest the NYPD's Stop and Kiss program. New Yorkers who have been stopped often say the encounters feel extremely intrusive. Going through my pockets, throwing my stuff on the ground, kissing me on my neck and face. They push me up against the wall and start nibbling on my ear. Joining us now is legal analyst Susan Hughes and Mark Brennan, a former police officer who has defended the Stop and Kiss program. Look, it's one thing to kiss someone who you think might commit a crime, but these officers are just kissing people left and right with no probable cause. If you've got nothing to hide, then it's not a problem. They just stop, ask where you're going, give you a gentle kiss or two, and let you go. Mark, there have been examples, public examples, where these procedures have just gone too far. Let's take a look at a disturbing cell phone video that's been making the rounds on the internet. Stop! Put your hands on your head. Oh, come on, man. They just kissed me two blocks ago. Come on, man. I didn't do Shut anything. Shut the f up and let me kiss you. Look, the cops can either kiss people now before there's violence, or they can be kissing a bunch of dead bodies at a crime scene. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. You can join us here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Also, you're invited to join us via Skype. Our Skype username right here is lrn.fm. So feel free to connect to us that way. You'll, in a lot of cases, sound like you're sitting in the studio with us if you're on Skype. Sounds that much better. Then your phone calls with you tonight. It's Ian. And Mark. And uh, we, in the last hour, had a gentleman call in regarding vaporizers and how they helped him actually quit smoking. And this isn't an uncommon story. Uh, I know of multiple people in my own personal life who have used vaporizers, e-cigarettes, and the like, to move from smoking, inhaling this 
nasty carbon monoxide based fume or whatever the particulate matter 200 carcinogens yeah inhaling that on a regular basis day in and day out and moving from that to inhaling essentially the equivalent of water vapor now it's vaporized uh, it's propylene good. glycol yeah. but you know it's something different it's not it's the uh, stuff they use on dance floors to make that fog stuff it's arguably not as dangerous and uh, and so now, well, the government thinks it could still harm children. So therefore, people who are vaporizing uh, vapor users should stay away from the insides of businesses and other private establishments. They have to be outside in certain cities like New York City, I believe, is one of them that has uh, implemented these regulations. Also, you're going to look at the federal government now passing regulations that may just put most of the providers of these products out of business. Here's the story from Fortune.com. And then coming up, we still have to talk about Chewbacca being arrested in Ukraine for, pr- uh, for promoting Darth Vader for president or whatever the premier is over there. Uh, when Randy Freer, this is from Fortune.com, was trying to quit smoking, he wanted to try vaping, battery-operated devices that deliver nicotine by vaporizing liquids. Some smokers find the combo of the flavors and the ability to dial down the nicotine helps them quit. But Freer found he couldn't keep a supply of the vaporizers he liked. They were always out of stock. So, being the entrepreneurial type, he created his own e-liquids to vape. In 2012, he launched POET, which stands for Pursuit of Excellent Taste, a small business based in Seal Beach, California, that sells e-liquids. Three years later, he says his company sells to some 130 stores internationally, as well as online, and has $500,000 worth of annual sales. Wow. It's a great success story. Sure. But all of that could disappear if the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, as expected, finalizes its rules on e-cigarettes and other vaping products. The rules, and by the way, earlier in the show, the news that we shared about this was that those rules that they're talking about have now been sent to the White House for final review. Mm. So this is getting closer and closer to being a, a done deal. The rules would require federal approval for most flavored liquid nicotine juices and e-cigarette devices that are sold in vape shops. Freer says, quote, if that FDA rule goes through, it'll put me back into the job market. Yeah, it sure will because um, you know there's a lot of different liquids out there, and these guys that make money putting together their own flavors and that sort of thing, that's going to be a big deal. Well, the reason why it'll be a big deal is because they'll basically make the regulations impossible to uh, the hoops will be impossible to jump through unless you have millions of dollars to spend on it. That'll be the idea. And yeah. if you're only doing five hundred thousand dollars in annual sales. You probably don't have a bank account with millions in it after just three years. Remember, that's just their sales total. That's not the net. No. So, you know, what are they netting out of that? I don't know, a couple hundred thousand, maybe? Maybe. Uh, So here's the requirements, or at least some of the requirements. The approval process, according to one estimate, the approval process would require such an extensive data collection for each item that it would cost businesses $2 million to $10 million. And I think that means per item. Hmm. So if you want, you know, you got juice A with the apple flavor yeah. and juice B with the banana flavor, and you submit them both to the FDA for approval, include a $2 million check for both. It'll be like communist Russia where you have one type of pickle. Mm. And you can guarantee that that, uh, that product is going to be made by Philip Morris or whoever the other big uh, R.J. Reynolds. Some big organization, yep. yeah. Uh, so the Wall Street Journal and people and literally the regulator types will say, "What do you need with twenty-five different flavors? What well, do you think this is, Baskin Robbins?" Literally, <laughs> they will say ridiculous things like, "You don't need that many different flavors." The children mark ten That's be flavors the real... will be fine, yeah. as though they're not going to make these ten flavors wouldn't be the sort of flavors that children would like. Well, that's just it. That's going to be the real, uh, I guess, scare tactic here is that children would be attracted to fruity flavors, so no, therefore it should only taste this... like Camel cigarettes. No, what's scary here is is that the FDA has made some rules that it's going to pass by the White House and have implemented. This That's is what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Americans are going to have less choice in the area of, uh, you know, freedom to vapor or vape, and it's never going to go through the lawmaking process because, well, we have unaccountable bureaucrats that make rules at this point, pass them by our uh, God King, and they sign it, and then everything's uh, just fine. Uh, that that's democracy, isn't it? 
essentially, the FDA regulation is a guaranteed death knell for over 99% of the companies in the industry, says Greg Conley, president of the American Vaping Association, an advocacy group. That would affect the estimated 8,000 to 12,000 vape shops in the United States and the estimated 1,000 manufacturers and wholesalers of vaping equipment. Tobacco giants produce the e-cigarette brands, which look like cigarettes and are sold in supermarkets, but second-generation vaporizers, the, sole, uh, the kind that are sold by small and mid-sized businesses like Freer's, are larger, more like fountain pens, and users can customize them with different flavored e-liquids. They also have bigger batteries and cartridges, so they can last longer. Under the FDA proposed rules, there would be a retroactive pre-market review of any e-cigarette or vaping product on the market after 2007. So no grandfathering in mm. for any of the stuff pretty much that's out there right now. Since the industry has evolved so quickly, today's products have little equivalence to products on the market before 2007. Conley said, it essentially means the FDA is retroactively requiring all products on the market to submit to a new tobacco product application. The FDA is proposing different compliance dates to give a little leeway for small businesses so the regulations may not be noticeable to vapors for a couple of years. But there's a lot of pressure to restrict vaping and e-cigarette sales. All U.S. states, except for Maine, Pennsylvania, and Michigan, have laws that prohibit selling e-cigarettes and vaping products to minors. This year, there were roughly 200 bills introduced across 40 states that address some aspect of e-cigarette and vapor product regulation. Alex Clark, according to the Consumer Advocates for Smoke-Free Alternatives Association, said the overall theme of this legislation is an effort to fold vapor products into existing laws that apply to combustible cigarettes and other tobacco products, which, of course, they are not. Yeah, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. What these are is, is for many people, these are a cessation device. Now, I'm not claiming that uh, that these things are good for you. I would not say, you know what you should do instead of eating a bushel of kale today? You should Pick vaporize. Up Right, like I'm not saying that. That's no. ridiculous. But and, and I don't know how good kale is for you either. I suspect it's better for you than, than vaping. Uh, but this is it better than smoking cigarettes? At at this point, there isn't a lot of double blind tests. But at this point, we can see that eh, probably. I mean, from the personal stories that people tell, like the guy who was on the phone earlier saying he can breathe better now that he's using the vaporizer. He said it took him a month or so to clear out. Uh, for his lungs to kind of get back to a more normal uh, state, and it's made a difference for him. Yeah. And I believe those stories. Why would they? You know, there's no reason. That guy's not a manufacturer. He's no reason to tell a lie about that. The bills include taxing e-cigarettes and vaping devices. Now we're talking about the bills, the various bills around the country in, in different states, prohibiting vaping where smoking is banned already, prohibiting flavoring and advertising that is intended to appeal to minors, requiring licensing of vaping shops, labeling laws, and child-resistant packaging. So all of this crap is just being piled on to these poor people who are just trying to engage in a consensual activity of buying and selling and using a new technology that is actually helping save lives they're just piling it on let's put these people out of business i, I would say that uh, there's some danger to the um the vaporizer juice uh, like somebody's bound to get a hold of that at some point um either a dog or a kid or something and you know it's it's not good for you to drink that it's liable to kill you yeah uh, nicotine is a deadly poison you know a child proof top if that's the worst thing that they're going to do to these people, I think that um, you know that's that's pretty good. That's not the worst thing they're going to do. No, Mark. it's not. They're going. I just went the, through the laundry list of the various the different toe things the door. that they're going to do here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. All of these regulations, especially the FDA one, are putting a huge level of threat against this particular business, which arguably is one of the most positive things to happen to the nicotine world in decades. It's Free Talk Live. Attention, a very wealthy U.S. benefactor now reveals money-making secrets used by the rich and powerful. Credit success secrets once used only at the top levels of business are now being revealed to the general public. Imagine having a business that runs itself, puts money in your pocket, so you never have to go to work. Imagine someone else gave you the money to start. Secret groups are pulling for your success by giving perfect scores in both business and personal credit. They show you how to get good credit and how to use good credit. If you have bad credit, no credit, or your credit isn't as good as that other guy's credit, it really doesn't matter anymore. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many get cash in pocket right now. Call now for free information on how Credit Success Secrets Revealed can put money in your pocket so you never work again. Call 1-800-707-8719. 
That's 1-800-707-8719, 1-800-707-8719, or go to creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. Hi, this is Dr. Joel Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy. Have you ever wondered why farmers can keep their livestock lean and healthy just by feeding them minerals in a nutrient-dense diet? Before market, they cut off their minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains to fatten them up. So if weight control is this easy, why does the medical system prescribe invasive surgical gastric bypass for humans? The truth be told, according to research, you can avoid over 900 different diseases just by getting 90 essential nutrients daily. Check us out on the web at sonsoflibertyteam.com and order your Healthy Start Pack and get your 90 for life. Or dial 855-301-TEAM. I said essential, not optional, and every day. Easy. 90 for life on the web at sonsoflibertyteam.com or call 855-301-TEAM. That's 855-301-TEAM. That's 855-301-TEAM. Check us out on the web at sonsoflibertyteam.com at sonsoflibertyteam.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. CopLock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States, and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopLock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopLock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopLock possible. So please join the CopLock network now at coplock.lrn.fm. That's coplock.lrn.fm. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, live Sunday edition. Join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. If you are one of the people who believes there should be regulations att uh, attached to these e-cigarettes, that they need to be kept out of the hands of children at no matter the cost, even if it's putting all kinds of independent businessmen and women out of business, uh, resulting in evildoers, resulting in thousands of independent uh, vape shops being put out of business, because that's what the FDA is looking at doing here: is basically regulating the uh, the independent manufacturers, along with the uh, you know the big guys like R.J. Reynolds and <laughs> Philip Morris. You mean the guys that'll write the the regulations? The regulations, yeah. yeah. They probably already did write them, and because the regulations are almost ready to pass the FDA, they're being sent off to the White House for some kind of a final approval. Uh, before being forced down the throats of everybody in the United States and ultimately resulting in what, according to one of the industry associations here uh, in this story from Fortune magazine, will result in 99% of the companies in the industry dying, basically. That's what the uh, president of the American Vaping Association had to say. And, of course, that would leave 1% remaining, which would be Philip Morris and R.J. Reynolds and, you know, whoever else is out there in the 1% of tobacco and uh, vape manufacturers. 
So that's what we're talking about here. And you can join us, 855-450-FREE, because, Mark, you'd asked earlier for someone who supports these regulations to call the show. And I don't know if we've ever had someone who supports those regulations call the show. I mean, anybody who knows someone who uses these vaporizers knows that they likely rave about them, that they likely are so excited about them because they, they feel better when they're using them than when they're smoking cigarettes. Well, this is the, these regulations come about because of sort of a regulatory attitude that has uh, occurred at some point or another happened in the United States. What does that you mean? Know, the, the, the attitude is is that, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, I guess if the whoever said that this rule exists, then it must be the good rule. Like the assumption is that if you've got a rule that somebody's put in place is that that rule must be good. Well, no. It isn't. It's just an assumption that you've got a control freak that wants to tell people what to do. Are there are there good regulations out there? There are. And I'm not going to claim there aren't. Now, the question is, is that are they being implemented in a good fashion? And I think that no, that we have gotten to the point that patriotism has taken the, 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 the place of thought. Even for people that would say that they're on the left or something and maybe not terribly patriotic. That, so that therefore, yeah, well, well, I guess the government says that this is a good idea, so it's a good idea. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Consumer advocates are pushing for regulations, saying vaping presents major health concerns. Right. In a Consumer advocates? No, they're not consumer advocates. They might as well be advocates for R.J. Reynolds at this point, because that's who's going to benefit from all this. Uh, in a recent report by the Center for Environmental Health entitled Smoking Gun, Cancer-Causing Chemicals in E-Cigarettes. There are absolutely cancer-causing chemicals in e-cigarettes, but they are dwarfed by the cancer-causing chemicals that are in actual cigarettes. The group said it found the majority of e-cigarettes and other vaping products tested contained high levels of cancer-causing chemicals, uh, formaldehyde, and acetylhyde. You've got formaldehyde in your blood! Is that right? Yes. I didn't know that. The group said that it was, quote, concerned about the unregulated marketing of e-cigarettes. I bet they are. Those commies are concerned about the unregulated marketing, marketing of everything. And especially sales to teens and young people. While little is known about the health hazards from inhaling e-cigarette smoke. Well, apparently you don't know enough to call it uh, something besides smoke because by definition, vapor is anything but smoke. No one has ever inhaled e-cigarette smoke. Well, I suppose it's possible <laughs> that the e-cigarette device, the battery in the e-cigarette device, and has like... malfunctioned and actually sent up a plume of smoke and then somebody inhaled accidentally yeah, inhaled. That it would be bad yeah, and it probably bad. wouldn't be yeah. good for you, but it probably wouldn't kill you in the first inhalation. So the quantity of people who have inhaled e-cigarette smoke is nil. I think is that safe. Yet many e-cig users say it helps people quit smoking and believe these e-cigs are at least safer than regular cigarettes. They say that taking them off the market will hurt the chances of quitting for millions of current smokers. It's clear and obvious. Dr. Gregory Masters, an oncologist in Newark, Delaware. You know these uh, journalists that try so hard to find both sides of a, of a story like mm -hmm. this? They never try to find both sides when politicians are telling you, you know, how you're going to live your life. They'll look for the Democrats and the Republicans, but they're never saying, yeah. you know, less government. No one's out there. They're never putting that in the in No, the, Yeah, the, the question article. is always which way to regulate, not to not regulate yeah. or to regulate or not. Uh, Dr. Gregory Masters, an oncologist in Delaware, recently told WebMD he understands the conflicted public opinion opinion saying quote i do have t uh, safety concerns for e-cigarettes because nicotine is bad for you and we don't know all the risks with e-cigarettes but i struggle when i get asked by patients should i use e-cigarettes i don't want to condone e-cigarettes as a healthy alternative but it but uh could it be a less dangerous alternative it could be he says Lori tarkin is an it award could likely be Lori Tarkin is an award-winning health journalist who writes for the New York Times, national magazines, and websites. Oh, that's a little bit about the lady who just wrote that story for Fortune magazine. So uh, that's the piece. That's what's coming down uh, here with the FDA, possibly going to pass rules that are going to essentially make it impossible to uh, to create your own product and put it on the market. You remember years ago, Mark? Well, there was the, the worst part of this is this isn't even going to go through Congress. This is going to no. go through the Obama White House. It it's going to get si it's going to get signed and put into uh, you know use. It, I can't call it law. I mean, it's not law. It's just going to act like law. It's regulation. Uh, look, remember years ago, Mark? There was the story about the Consumer Product Safety Commission 
they were creating new rules that would basically put mom and pop manufacturers of toys out of business. I remember that was what I was thinking about when you were reading this. It's the same same story back then. Is this was probably five or seven or eight years? I don't know, a right. long time ago. The children could they could be lead paint. Right, people could be who are making wooden toys could be painting them with lead to kill our children. They, they were uh, requiring, and I believe this went through. I don't know if it's been overturned or something since right. then. They just put a bunch of but, manufacturers of children's wooden children's toys right. out of business. The, the requirement was the Thanks, same. Thanks, America. It was the same thing where the independent manufacturer would have to send off one of their products to be tested for lead at a large cost of like $1,500 per product. Now, obviously, this is even more expensive with, you know, $2 million to $10 million per product. Uh, but, you know, they would require this lead testing. And basically, if you were a mom and pop business who was making unique little wooden toys in your garage and then selling them at your store or whatever, that you'd have to send each one of them, each different model that you had, which they're all unique or whatever, you'd have to send them to the federal government or some testing lab to have this testing done. And then it would be cost prohibitive to ever sell that thing because you're not manufacturing them in the quantity, uh, the volume that uh, Mattel or Hasbro is doing. Doing. Sure. Mattel, you know, if Hasbro comes out with a new Transformer, they send off the test model to the testing company. Mm-hmm. Well, they're printing out another million of those models. So over the, you know, averaging that cost out, it's less than a penny per item. It's just fine. But yeah. with the average mom and pop business, they can't afford that. It's just that. out of business. You get a hundred and fifty thousand dollar bill to do, uh, you know, if you're a small time manufacturer with one or two people making some stuff in the garage, yeah. that's just a, uh, you know, pink slip. You're fired. Yeah, you're either going to end your business or you're going to out- operate as an outlaw, essentially, at that point. It's your choice. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen with these e- e-cigarettes. I mean, there's going to be, there's still going to be people making their own juice and that sort of thing, yeah. but if if this if these rules go through, and I sincerely hope they do not, they could oh, put boy. a whole bunch of people out of business. Our toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You're welcome to comment on that. Also, Chewbacca arrested in Ukraine, plus some good news from a court. I do like sharing good news when we have it. And there's good news about wiretapping, an oppressive wiretapping statute. It's taken a hit. Uh, 855-450-FREE. This is the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to produce an endless supply of nano-sized silver solutions right from the convenience of your home. Silver Lungs. With the addition of our unique lung delivery system, respiratory infections are targeted directly, where traditional oral administration simply cannot reach. This pioneering method also preserves the original particle sizes and delivers your silver solution directly into the bloodstream. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition, and you can join us right here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. With you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. And, of course, you can join us on uh, you can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features there on the brand new website for Free Talk Live. You can still create the content right there on the front page. You, the listener, get to suggest topics that we might talk about on the air. Of course, the best way to get on the air is to call the show. Uh, but this is a cool way for you to interact with other Free Talk Live listeners. You get to vote on the items that are already there. You vote it up if you like, down if you don't. So go and get interactive. Check out the brand new site. It's free, just like our site has always been. So, you know, free downloads, free shows, listen live, whatever. It's all on the house. Go and enjoy freetalklive.com. Let's go to Alex in Wisconsin. Alex, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello. Hi, how you guys doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, the vaping topic, actually, <clears throat> I'm a vapor. I've been vaping for almost two years now. I actually converted my father, who's been vaping since he was, or smoking since he was 13. He's now almost 70. He's a vapor now. And I'd love to know where the research is to back up these rules and regulations that they're trying to imply. Every who needs research? Yeah, who buy. needs research when you have the power of the pen? Every bottle of juice I buy is childproof. Is it? Every okay. one. I haven't found one that isn't. It's a good idea. I, <laughs> I, and I just want to know where they're coming up with this. It's so bad, and it's equal to cigarettes. Banning it in public places, banning it everywhere, when there's no real research in the United States. Yeah, there's research in Jap Japan, Russia, but... Where's the research here in our country? Well, I don't know if the where the research comes from really matters, but I haven't really seen much research in the way that shows that vaping is in any way as dangerous as cigarettes, and I don't think that the FDA really cares. They're they're in the pocket of the uh, the big tobacco manufacturers, as far as I'm concerned, and the big tobacco manufacturers have absolutely been losing sales because of the independent vape uh, manufacturers, and they want to put them under. I mean, that's really what all of this boils down to. They'll just use the children and fear as their selling point, even if they don't have a smidge of data. They'll just simply say, well, this is attractive to children, so therefore, all these regulations. That's all they have to do. Yeah, I mean, it's really no different than non-alcoholic beer. Alex, uh, thanks for your call tonight. I, a good I appreciate comparison. hearing from you. Uh, the toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
Chewbacca, he's been arrested. Here's the story from RT. The growling, hairy spaceship mechanic from Star Wars was fined an equivalent of $7.50 on Sunday (laughs) after breaking the country's election laws in Ukraine. He attempted to uh, canvas voters for Darth Vader. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, why would Chewbacca uh, go for Darth Vader? That's a good question, Mark. Uh, I don't know if I could uh, give you the answer as the video I imagine is not in the language that we can understand. But there is video here of uh, Chewbacca being arrested. And I imagine if Chewbacca was going to answer questions, he would be also hard to understand. Uh... Yeah. Uh, But nonetheless, the detention of the erstwhile companion of smuggler-turned-hero Han Solo, who appeared to have turned to the dark side, happened in the port city of Odessa. Chewbacca drove Darth Vader to a polling station, but police arrested him for violating a law that forbids campaigning on Election Day. They were also dismayed when he failed to produce a valid identification and resisted arrest. Chewbacca later told the media he was unable to pay the 170 Hervina fine as his funds are an, (laughs) this is his quote, quote, as his funds are an intergalactic bank that has no branches on this planet. (laughs) (laughs) Lord Vader complained about the detention of his supporter. He also said he failed to cast his own ballot as he was missing from the voter registry, despite the fact that he has a Ukrainian passport issued from Darth are issued for Darth Aleksevich Vader. Ukrainians are casting ballots in a poll that is viewed Isn't by many. That, uh, is, is Darth, Darth Vader's uh, dad named Alex? I haven't the slightest okay. clue. Um, I don't know. Maybe he changed his name. Maybe this is one of those Vermin Supreme kind of guys who, who literally changed his name to Darth Vader. Ukrainians are casting ballots in a poll that is viewed by many as a confidence vote for the ruling coalition, which has lost much popularity during the fo- or following 20 months of economic hardships. Despite the somber mood, there were a number of strange incidents that took place around the country, uh, including in Kiev, a station where President Petro Poroshenko voted open late because of the chair of the election commission losing the key to the safe, which contained the ballot papers. The Mm. safe was cracked open with a rotating saw, which allowed the president and others to vote. And a somewhat frightening confrontation happened in the city of Berdyansk in the southern uh, southeastern Ukraine. One of the voters came in the company of a bodyguard armed with an assault rifle. Police insisted the gunman left the premises after which his client voted. It's not clear why the authorities did not detain the armed bodyguard, who seemed to be taking his job a little too seriously. And finally, in the village Libokora, near the Lvov region, commission members asked voters to cast ballots in different boxes depending on who they voted for. They said it would make counting the ballots much easier. It'd make, throw, it'd make throwing the other <laughs> box in the river much easier. Yeah, that sounds really shifty. Uh, requiring, <laughs> requiring a separate ballot box for a different candidate. Uh, would you, in- put, you put one guy in here, the other one in the incinerator. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that uh, that's like a clear violation of the idea of an anonymous ballot, right? Yeah, that's like, really uh, funny. The, the whole idea behind you know why they have the little screens that you go behind in the united states is that people aren't supposed to know how you're voting it's supposed to be a secret ballot and the reason why it's supposed to be a secret ballot is because traditionally in politics there have been there's a history of let's just say the threat of violence being used against people to vote one way or another and in the communist I- russia they stuff you in box yeah uh, in, you know, in the idea being that if somebody knows which way you're voting, then some kind of pressure will come down upon you in some way. Maybe they'll trump up some sort of criminal charge against you or perhaps come after your business with regulations uh, that may not have otherwise come at you if they knew that you weren't voting in the way that you were. So that's a pretty serious uh, ballot issue there, forcing people into sure different ballot is. boxes. Uh, so Chewy has been arrested, uh, fined a very minor amount, $7.50. But, but he doesn't have a bank account on this planet. No can pay. So what happens in Ukraine if you can't pay a $7.50 fine? I How would I know? I don't I wasn't really <laughs> asking you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, breaking news uh, today, this actually, it's a court case that was decided a couple of few days ago, but I just got the news today about the decision, and I think I amazingly was the first person to get this, so I broke the story over at freekeen.com. Headline, New Hampshire judge says secretly recording the police is legal dismisses wiretapping charge. There's a man uh, named Alfredo Valentin 
who was arrested for so-called wiretapping uh, when the police, he was dealing with the police and it was near his home. He was actually outside his, his house at the at the time. And he, in his conversation with them, was recording them, but sort of holding his phone down by his leg. So he was recording the audio of the interaction with the police. Which and, is the important part. Yeah. And and he was doing it in a way that didn't make it obvious that he was recording, right? So had he been holding the phone up the entire time and pointing it at the police, they may have been better aware that he was recording them. In this case, they claimed they didn't know. And so they claimed that because he was secretly recording them that the wiretapping statute applied to, to this case. And for those that don't know, New Hampshire is one of the few states... It's free in a lot of ways. No doubt about it. New Hampshire is probably arguably one of the freest, if not the freest state. But the New Hampshire wiretapping statute is terrible. And it's one of the worst. It is uh, what's called a uh, two-party consent or an all-party consent state where, in theory, everyone who's being recorded has to be aware and consent to the recording. And so we've seen the police come after these folks. Well, the police go after them, uh, after basically anybody who goes after the police. And it's almost right. never employed in any other way. That's right. And so they went after this guy for it. They charged him with felony wiretapping. And we'll give you what the judge had to say about this because it's good news. Uh, you can also share your thoughts with us here. Our toll free number is 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. This is Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. It's time Time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke too. LaSig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaSig.com, spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. LaSig e-cigarettes, kick some ash. Clyde, age 59, and I reside in Florence, South Carolina. The doctors diagnosed me as having clogged arteries. Felt like I was carrying heavy concrete blocks around my feet and legs. I started taking heart and body extract as directed. It is less than three weeks, and I'm like a young man again. It's unbelievable that an herbal formula can work so fast and so powerfully. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. 
Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us even in these remaining moments. We do have enough time for you. Uh, The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. Uh, So in New Hampshire, this is a destination for the Free State Project. The Free State Project is what, Mark? Free State Project is a project to move 20,000 liberty-loving individuals to New Hampshire in order to uh, you know, they would work to make the maximum role of government to be the protection of life, liberty, and property. And that basically sums up what uh, the what one uh, states that one intends to do when one signs up for the Free State Project. But what that means is a variety of different things for different people. Some people move here and go on about their lives. Maybe they'll write some letters to the editor. They'll vote. Um, maybe sometime down the line they might consider running for school board or something like that. That's their level of commitment. Other people have moved here and they make it their life's work to uh, make you know the place freer. Some people produce lots of media. Uh, you know whatever people in- intend to do, different people do different things. Right, and we actually have some attorneys who have moved here. And yeah, they've, they've become licensed to the uh, the bar here in New Hampshire, and they work on cases that have an effect on the ideas of freedom, that have an effect on the status of liberty here in New Hampshire, and ultimately may have an effect on the entire United States. Uh, the some of the decisions that were cited in the case that I'm about to tell you about regarding wire t- so-called wiretapping here in New Hampshire cited some federal cases, one of which was uh, a case with the president of the Free State Project, Carla Garrick. She had a very good case, which was decided in her favor at a federal level. Uh, that, in where in New Hampshire? Where is the city, uh, the town in New Hampshire, where 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 it happened? Yes, that's true. Uh, and she was uh, arrested by the police for recording the police. Ultimately, she was victorious. I think she took away a fifty-seven thousand dollars settlement from the town of Ware and the police Good department for her. there uh, in that case. And her case helped to shore up the case law, including the Glick decision, which is another historic decision out of Boston. Uh, these are also another, it's another federal court decision where uh, the the courts decided cr- crystal clear that you have the right to record the police in public when they're doing their duties, no matter what the wiretapping laws say. You have the right to record the police. As you should. So what made the case of Alfredo Valentin different from these previous cases, argued the state, was that Valentin wasn't openly recording. He was secretly recording the police. I think we needed to know the answer to this question. I'm glad we do know the answer. I'm just uh, sorry that Valentin had to uh, go through all the trouble to answer it for us. Yeah, unfortunately, Valentin, uh, according to his attorney, Brandon Ross, who's the Free State Project early mover I was referring to, uh, Valentin, because he was charged with a felony initially in this case, destroyed his career. How uh, so? I, I don't have the details on that. I okay. presume he was fired. Usually that's what destroying someone's career means. I mean, if somebody gets hit with a felony charge, uh, a lot of people won't wait till the uh, the conviction. Yeah, that's They'll true. They'll just go ahead and fire you right then. You just, we just can't have a felon working here. Or an accused felon in yeah, this something case. something like that. Because ultimately they ended up dropping the felony charge and recharging him with a misdemeanor of wiretapping for recording a conversation he had with the police in public. And he did record it surreptitiously. He was holding the phone down by his leg during the conversation. At some point, the police learned that he had recorded them. I'm not sure how they uh, ascertained that information, but he was arrested and charged with a felony. Then they dropped it to misdemeanor. And ultimately, that case has now been dismissed by a judge, Superior Court Judge Jillian Abramson in Hillsborough County, New Hampshire, dismissed the case in a six-page decision issued this week where the most relevant portion I've quoted here in the freekeen.com article, quote, 
The court finds that the First Amendment protects secretly filming police in public for the same reasons that the First Amendment generally protects filming police. The public has a right to gather and disseminate information about the police. Period. Excellent. You have a right, says this judge. Now, maybe they'll appeal. Maybe the you know the attorney general's office will appeal to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. Maybe it'll go up higher to the federal courts. And you know, ultimately, it wouldn't bother me if they did appeal this because the more good uh, court decisions we can get in favor of recording the police, even secretly, is good for all of us because recording the police is the number one accountability method to keep the police honest and to, or at least as honest as possible. And to keep them, you know, on the straight and narrow and keep people's eyes and ears. Everybody needs accountability in their job. Everybody needs accountability in their job. If you don't think police, if you think everybody else needs accountability in their job, but police don't, you think the police are some kind of class of superhuman and they're not. So this is a great decision by this court. Uh, Brandon Ross, the attorney, had this to say about the decision, quote, by charging him with a felony, the state destroyed my client's career and made things much worse with this wild goose chase prosecution. I'm glad the court wasn't fooled by the state's manifestly incorrect representations about the law. I look forward to getting him his day in federal court. Now, you may be asking what that's all about. Well, he's talking about the million-dollar lawsuit that has now been filed against the Manchester police. Maybe these towns will finally crack down on their police that, I mean, here in Keene, New Hampshire, they figured it out. And they figured it out some time ago. I just came in contact with a police officer last week. I, you know, It's been about a week. And the first thing I did when he walked up to the car is I said, you're being audio and video recorded. Now, I don't think he understood why or how that was happening, but he said, okay. Moving like on. Right. <laughs> you know, that was the, the end of the story. Yep. I've, I have the video. I had the video. I don't have it anymore because it wasn't interesting. Not interesting. Just a routine traffic stop, yeah. right? Um, so, and, yeah. And, by the way, all the uh, the crybaby uh, police supporters out there that think that it's going to end up on YouTube. It didn't end up on YouTube because there was nothing to put on YouTube. Right. You don't want it to end up on YouTube? Don't act like a jackhole. Yeah, don't throw a fit. Just, you know, be professional. So, story from photographyisnotacrime.com, Carlos Miller reported on this back in July. Uh, the city of Manchester, New Hampshire, and two of its police officers are facing a lawsuit for more than a million dollars after arresting Alfredo Valentin, 43, on March 3rd after police conducted a no-knock raid on his home in search of... Marijuana. Drugs that belonged to a tenant and was later fired from his job because of the arrest. So there we go. He was fired because okay. of the arrest. Uh, Valentin was never charged with any drug crimes and, according to the lawsuit, was not even aware there were drugs in his home. Police were investigating Christopher Chapman, who they suspected of selling heroin, and were able to arrest him outside of the Superior Court. Despite already having the man in custody, the department sent a SWAT team to break into Valentin's home. What else would you do? Firing incendiary devices through the property's windows, kicking in the doors, and entering the property SWAT style with semi-automatic weapons. Damage. Damaging property, terrifying the two women who are still in the house, and creating an unjustifiable risk of accidental death or injury, according to the lawsuit. The police department's website claims its SWAT team is only used in special circumstances, like the execution of high-risk narcotic search warrants. As special as we say they are. But the department's own press release about the raid on Valentin's home make no reference to weapons or other factors that would have justified the violent and destructive tactics. I wonder if they brought out the Bearcat for it, too. Valentin had surveillance cameras installed in his home that likely captured video of the raid, but they were seized by the police. And Valentin was at work at the time of the raid, but went home after receiving a call from his neighbor who said his dog had gotten loose. After, thank goodness they didn't shoot it. After seeing vehicles parked in his driveway and evidence of forced entry into his home, Valentin confronted the intruders. One of them told him he was a police officer, but refused to identify himself. Valentin asked to speak to a supervisor and was approached by Sergeant Christopher Sanders, who said he had a search warrant but refused to show it. Sanders uh, this is just sounds like really Comedy on the up and up here. It's like the Sunday funnies. Uh, Sanders told Valentin to come back in an hour. He returned an hour later and used his smartphone to audio record, was approached by the two officers, who eventually showed him the warrant but then arrested him for wiretapping after he started walking away. Both sergeants are named in the lawsuit as defendants. Third man was later arrested by Massachusetts State Police as part of the investigation. And Brandon Ross, Valentin's attorney, said that while he's cognizant of the heroin problem in New England, it doesn't justify right. police mistreating There's members. There's heroin problem. Let's just take away people's civil rights. Yeah, it doesn't. There'll justify- always be a new problem. and You'll never have civil rights again. 
Uh, it doesn't justify police mistreating members of the public. He said, quote, you have this war on drugs. It's just going and going and failing completely. And what uh, and what do you do about that is a policy question I can't answer. But people's basic liberties and constitutional rights should not be casualties in that war. He did convince the police to drop the wiretapping case, but prosecutors later decided to bring it before a grand jury and were able to obtain an indictment. And uh, so anyway, Ross said at the time, my confidence in him being not or in him not being convicted is 100 percent. They did this to stall everything. And he was right. They didn't convict him. The charges were thrown out. The judge in the case affirming your right to record the police even in secret. So now, Mark, you can choose whether or not you want to tell that cop when he comes up to your window that he's being recorded. It's really kind of convenient, too, because um, I maybe I don't want to start the conversation off that way. Maybe I want to start it off in another way rather mm-hmm. than having to say you're being audio and video recorded. Um, it's, it starts things, it starts the whole conversation off differently. Ross also excoriated the New Hampshire legislature saying, quote, this never needed to happen. Numerous bills have been brought before yeah. the legislature to fix this. And each time they failed to act to bring simple, necessary clarity to a law which police are continually abusing. But the NH chiefs of police scare those lawmakers each time and nothing happens. So hopefully right. there are a bunch of statist old geriatric n- nimrods. Hopefully up there. we'll see things change as the Free State Project gains more influence. Like- When commercials come on, don't push the button. Instead, listen. Even if you don't sell things for a living, you're still selling in the various conversations and transactions that make up your busy day. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. So take a lesson from Madison Avenue. Often the fewer words, the more effective the message. Like Jiffy Lube, where you never need an appointment or the office max ad that says 